Are you ready to have some conversations with some leading minds and interesting people in the real estate industry? Today on the 200th episode of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 200. And you can find all of our show notes over at WBNL podcast. Two, two zero zero. Another way. Yeah, I don't know. See, it's, it's weird. <laughs> It's Jenna 200 Brian. though. What the heck? That's crazy, right? We started this podcast about, well, over four years ago. Wow. Uh, our very first episode we did as a video, but then we kind of converted just into the normal podcast episode all the way up until what episode was? I think it was 100 where we went to video. All and we came back time. to video. A boat. Yeah. We do audio and video. Yeah, it's crazy. Just and about... so what we decided to do today was uh, get some of the folks that we have we have worked with before and various people that we know throughout the industry and uh, just ask them three questions. We came up with three questions yep. that we're going to ask them to and hopefully you glean some great advice, get some insights on uh, what they've done in the real estate business, what they think is working for them and so on. Yeah, it, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to talk to these guys because these guys are not only just industry professionals and and uh, great at all what they do, but they're also friends of the podcast. So we, right. we are excited to talk to all these people. Yeah, we've got agents, we've got brokers, we've got people who've done, done it all, different uh, levels of experience in the real estate industry. Uh, and so we're excited to chat with everybody and, and share with share that wisdom and insight from real estate professionals uh, across the country. All right, shall we jump in? Let's do it. All right. All right, to continue celebrating our 200th anniversary, our 200th anniversary, our 200th episode, we have Rich Brodkin from the Brodkin I feel Group. 200. <laughs> it, feels, it feels like it's 200. You're absolutely right. Hey, Rich Brodkin has, uh, has a phenomenal real estate story. He actually started out, had a whole nother career in uh, the soft drink uh, industry, which we won't get into today, but it's a pretty fabulous story as well. Uh, has gotten into real it's estate. Bubbly. It's, it's a bubbly story. It's a bubbly story. <laughs> and it has freaking crushed it in real estate there in Las Vegas. There's another way to put that. He's an incredible leader. So welcome to our 200th episode, uh, Rich Brock. And why don't you give us a little bit of background about really what drew you into real estate and then why or how you built the incredible team that you have. Sure. It really um, uh, was a situation being in corporate life uh, for 30 years and, and uh, in fact i just got my statement from marriott properties uh and i sp i've spent 1540 nights over 30 years which is like four years of your life yeah. in, in, in marriott properties and i was traveling 150,000 miles a year i was 53 years of age and my doctor said this is not going to work okay and i had a great friend of mine my college roommate who lived in las vegas and he said come on out here uh, with your resume let me introduce you uh, to some executives in, in hotel entertainment and gaming and i had an interview with uh, stations casinos here in las vegas and i made a pitch I told him I'd be willing to work there for one dollar for uh, 52 weeks if they would bring uh, allow me to learn everything about hotel gaming and entertainment. And they looked at my resume and uh, Frank Fertitta said, I've never heard that kind of proposal. Well, obviously, uh, he didn't like it enough because he didn't make it happen uh, because they are all about family and relationships and paying your dues in the business. So I said, what the hell am I going to do? And uh, I had met one of Jan O'Brien's agents, uh, Mitch Fulfer. Mm -hmm. He had uh, sold, a, uh, I gave him a few referrals. He sold my house and he introduced me to Miss O'Brien. And I came aboard with uh, her brokerage. And that was 19 years ago. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. So 
And honestly, just to jump in, when I saw Rich uh, in his background, I knew he was destined to go. The, the one thing I'll say before we jump into these questions, Richard, is that you said way back then, there's a better way to do a real estate business in a team. I mean, honestly, he did way back then. Well, I knew I didn't it. want to be a realtor. Yep. Yeah, I knew I wanted to be a business owner. And honestly, you saw that then and yes, you went about doing it. You created a model that has stood the test of time uh, that it works well today as it did 19 years ago, right? Can you yes. talk a little bit about that model and and just, you know, because it is unique. It's not for everyone. I mean, not everybody. It, can it do is. It and, 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 and you and Matt specialize and in, in, I'm not going to go through the, all the different types of uh, team models. I know you spend a lot of it and you provide a lot of that coaching. Um, but I saw a, a, a need for new agents who get kind of lost. OK, I was a new agent and uh, pretty pretty strong sales skill and business acumen, but you still got to learn this business and you got to learn uh, how to be a realtor. And uh, it's, it's just an amazing need. And uh, most brokerages uh, don't take the time to focus on coaching, training, mentoring systems, processes. And I recognize that coming from a structured environment mm -hmm. that I could provide that. So, uh, I took the risk and people thought I was nuts. Why would you want to work with new and inexperienced people? It is incredibly demanding, a lot of time. Um, it would be a lot better to work with more productive people. But uh, I learned from the business side, if you want to make some money, there's margins yeah. uh, that you can create bringing people in at 50, 60, 70 percent as opposed to 100 percent. There's not a whole lot there for anybody. So I created a, uh, a niche. Uh, and put together a whole training method and systems and hired uh, uh, Jan and Matt to help me uh, develop a, uh, a, the back end and uh, technology. And we have now had tremendous success. We are the number one uh, mm -hmm. team in Las Vegas, uh, in, in the state of Nevada, in terms of production. So, uh, how did you end last year? Uh, what were your numbers on as far as like uh, real trend numbers as far as teams for yeah, Nevada? And I'm, pr I'm proud. Uh, we, we went up significantly. Okay, we ended the year at 347 transactions. Wonderful. And wow. 148 million in sales. Wonderful, Richard. That's brilliant. Wonderful. In and the our, pan in year two of the pandemic. Right. <laughs> right. Those years. Our, our head count is up to 136. And I was and we have about 60 in the pipeline, so we should be 200 by the end of the calendar year. And yeah. that's, a true, that's a true brokerage within a brokerage model, and that, that's what it's all about. And I think you've just kind of answered it. Let me go to this first question, and I think you, you've, you've talked around it, but maybe you can be more distinct here on what, do, what if, if I'm, asking, I'm asking you, what has defined your real estate career? So this is that question of the legacy thing of like, Sure. What, what do you want to be known for when people go, yeah, that Rich Brocken, this is what he did in the real estate business. Yeah, you can talk really, a little bit on it. That's really cool. And, mm -hmm. and uh, Matt kind of hit it on, on his note that he wrote back to me. He's a good guy. Okay. That's really what I want on my tombstone. Okay. Uh, he, he was a good, he, he was a good man. And, and I wanted to approach real estate with that type uh, create uh, create a culture that was unique Okay, that was diverse. I'm very, it's who I am as a man, yeah. it's who I am, that's the way I was raised. So uh, I wanted a, a, an Hispanic team, a Chinese American speaking team, um, African American. Uh, so my team is a microcosm of the, of the city of Las Vegas, okay, uh, which is a, uh, you know, melting pot. Yeah. Melting pot, right? And so we have teams that, that fit. Uh, the community. And I'm very, 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 very proud of that. And I wanted to uh, leave that as a, as a, as a legacy. And we, we have built a very unique model focusing on, on new inexperienced people and careers. Okay. That is the magic word. And, and Jan had a lot of involvement in that is I'm not, my team is not just transactional. Okay, where you're taking a piece of action on their on their production, we provide opportunities for career growth, okay, and uh, we have revenue share, 
I was I was way ahead of the curve. EXP is a powerhouse. Uh, what they've yeah. accomplished, what they've accomplished nationally with their revenue share program. Uh, Keller Williams does profit share, but I did revenue share. I've, I've been doing it for about six or seven years, and it really does help retention and it helps recruitment. So I built my own company, and it's it's got my blood, it's got my sweat, it's got my tears. Yes, it's got your money. money. I've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I've learned a lot of things, done a lot of things right, done a lot of things wrong. But having worked in corporate life for 30 years, there's nothing better than when it's yours, even when you make your mistakes. At least it, it's got it's got your your. Uh, your guts all over it. You know, and Rich, you know, you've worked with hundreds of agents over that, that span yes. of, of time. And I would think that if you asked that question about, you know, what they thought about you and, and how you brought your personal, uh, just you brought Rich Brocken to the table, uh, they would agree with you. So I think that you are going to be able to have that legacy without a doububt. I think it's Thank so you, unique, uh, Rich, because it's the truth. You, you, one of the things that I have so much respect for you, but one of the things that I look back in all the years I've known you as being your broker to just working with you in the, in our, you know, partnerships and coaching and whatnot has been your willingness, that entrepreneurial spirit that you have, that true business minded come in and be willing to take risks, to do things, to find ways to find a way to, you know, adjust to what's happening in the market. You've done that as long as I've known you, you know, right. um, and, and made some big, bold decisions. And, and at, at the core of it all, though, has been the things that you just talked about, who yeah. you are, what you provide and the fact that there is a home for, um, you know, a person to have a career path. That is a hundred percent. You really, true. you really, you know, uh, you, you, you gotta be a winner. Okay. And win winners, everything you read, it's all about being able to adapt. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and real estate is, is going to be changing incredibly over the next two to three years. Right. And you, you, you got it read you got to know what's going on you got to stay abreast you got to be willing to make change uh i'm 70 plus years old and i'm not the most technology savvy guy but i do recognize that uh, you better get in the game and use those tools or find or hire a coach uh to assist you on your on your staff to to cover those areas exactly. uh, because it's just going to pass you by it's just been inspiring. Okay, so which brings us to the second question was, is there, what would you recommend or what would you say in your experience is the best tool or system that you've used or that you recommend that people use? I mean, like, you know, what is it for you? I have an idea of what I think it is, but let's see yeah. what you say it is. Well, in, in terms of technology? Or no, it doesn't have to be technology. Just if we, if you think about you. Okay, thank what's you. What's the best real estate tool or system for agents okay to me it, to me it is it, it is having a crm okay mm -hmm. uh because it is all about uh customer relations and look, i'm all about the human side okay uh there are redfin and, and, and zillow and, and those uh fathom and compass all those technology driven companies exp with avatars that's not me Okay, I am all about relationships. Okay, mm -hmm. relationships with your your team, relationships with your clients, relationships with your vendors, and really keeping your word, uh, creating win win situations. Always looking at it from the other side's perspective, and having respect for what they, what they need, and um, having people want to share it a foxhole with you and trusting you and yep. uh, uh, sometimes taking the short end of it and uh, just doing what's right. I mean, that, if you, if, if, if you hold up to the philosophy, the golden rule and do what's right. Yeah. If you when you, you teach, lot, are you still teaching classes? Are you still yes, teaching? I some of the, I teach, you know, uh, and I bet teach. you say this, what do you say? And I, I borrow this in my teaching now and I'm teaching um, newer agents. Richard, I watch Richard do his training and he has a, a, a patented, you know, um, Brocken training method, which is really his philosophy that he just was briefly talking about. And it's what we helped him get recorded. And he, and you have, that is part of your legacy, Rich, but you always say, make a friend. And you just poked about relationships. Now, whether yeah. you have a CRM or not, I, I think that's important, but you know, what's more important having conversations with people Absolutely. And you say it all the time, make a friend. And I have, I borrow that now. I just want you to know, I heard it from you. And I'll say, as Rich Brocken says, build rapport, 
build that trust and make right. a friend, have a conversation with someone. Exactly. That's how you're going to start it out. Right. Exactly. Because, um, if you're going to grind out business every month and fight and fight, uh, you're going to struggle. Yep. So by making a friend and doing a great job and getting five to seven referrals from them, then you've built a business. All right. Okay. And, and it's, it's a lot more enjoyable that way than having to not know where your next piece of business is coming from. When people pick up the phone or text you and say, you did a great job for me. I got my daughter moving here from San Diego and they want to sell their $700,000 home there and you get a referral there and then you sell them a house here in Las Vegas. Uh, that's kind of cool. It totally is. And yeah. that's what, all right. Last, last serious question. Then we have some fun questions that Matt's going to do. So here you go. If you, what's the best advice you'd give your own self? Now you took a different path, not wanting to really be a real estate agent, but I want you answer this any way you want to. What's the best yeah. advice you'd give yourself starting out brand new back 19 years ago, Knowing what you know now, we all wish that we could, you know, if we could go back in time and take our body of knowledge, what would you have done differently, if anything, starting new? I think I would have uh, invested more time in, 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 in areas where I'm weak. Okay, mm -hmm. this is really a, uh, I got a lot of good qualities. Like I always say, God gives you some gifts and he, he takes some away from you. And uh, I love, I love to watch golf. I, I really, I, I enjoy it. I watched this Phoenix open yesterday and it was great to watch these great players. And I, I just, I, I, I admire excellence. Okay. But one of the weaknesses in my character is I stay away from my weaknesses hmm. and don't hmm. push myself. Okay. I, I, I got some strengths and I, pound the hell out of my strengths. Okay. But those technology areas, okay. Have helped me back a little bit. Okay. I become, I become codependent. I delegate a whole lot more. And yeah, when you're the leader, you, you can do that. But I'll tell you what, if I was back in the beverage business, and I really mean this, honestly, I had high level jobs there. I'm not sure I'd be moving up the ladder as fast as I did then because they require their executives to be self-sufficient. Mm. Okay. And I was leaning on my executive. I've been leaning on my executive assistant for 50 years, Jan. Uh, I mean, so I, I think that's, I would. That's I would great advice, to, Richard. I'm sorry. That's great advice. It's like, yeah. you're looking back saying, embrace the things that you, you stayed away from, or that might be. Or, you know, or, test yourself, challenge yourself. Or, uh, don't be afraid of them. Maybe you're right. Or, I mean, if you do uh, a few things, you don't have to necessarily, it's different than saying, you know how to do X than choosing to delegate it versus you don't know how to do X. I can say this. It. I haven't walked away from the technology. I love it. I'm a numbers yeah, freak. True. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I love the data. So I'm all over it. Okay. Or I'll get somebody to go do it because I know how important it is. All right. Yep. But uh, I would like to be more self-sufficient. Okay. Yes. Love that insight. No, that's really, that's actually really a vulnerable way to answer that question. I appreciate that. That's, that's very cool. The good thing about you, Rich, is though you certainly would find people and surround yourself with people that can do those jobs, I'll, right? I'll, so. I'll get there somehow. We know this about you. <laughs> all exactly. right, Matt, over to you. For yeah. All right, Rich. So, so we've asked some questions that have dug a little bit into what you've done with your real estate career and kind of how you formed all that and kind of thought press behind it, process behind it. And I feel like we get a little look into Rich Brock in that way. Um, but now we want to jump into a little segment we call Rapid Fire okay. to get to know the real Rich Brock. In. All right. I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> don't be afraid. Believe me, don't be scared. <laughs> okay. Here's the first exactly. question. That oldest real estate question in the book, buyers or sellers? Oh, sellers all day long. Okay. That didn't surprise I mean, me. He who controls the inventory controls the gold. There Particularly the last two years, I mean, you, you didn't even need to put a sign up. Okay, homes homes were sold so quick over, over, and working with buyers. Uh, I I I love my agents, but I have great empathy for what they've had to deal with working with uh, buyers, multiple offers, and all mm -hmm. the frustration, and, and and investors scooping up deals with cash. Uh, so sellers. Uh, it's been a it's been a pretty easy deal working yep. with sellers. All right, so here's a follow up question to that one. This is going to be like hand in hand. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Huh? I'm allergic to cats. There you go. <laughs> That's easy. Okay. All right. 
Beach House or Cabin in the Woods? I know oh, the answer to this. Oh, we know this one. Uh, uh, my philosophy, I, my retirement philosophy is called SEMA. I'll, I'll clean it. I'll clean it up for the podcast. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll call it SIMT. S I M T. <laughs> sand in my tush. But, okay. <laughs> it used to be SEMA. Okay, but sand in my, I love having sand in my tush. All right. Beach Again, you being in Florida, I know you can relate to that. That's Love awesome. It. All right. Work from the office or work from home? Me, the office, believe it or not. Uh, you can't, I'm an old dog, okay? And uh, I watch, uh, they say that uh, many companies are very happy because it reduced costs. Certainly the workers are happy saving commuting costs and things like that. I watch family members who have that luxury and I'm not sure their employers are getting the best shape, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of free time getting projects done at home that uh, they're not doing for, for their companies. I think for sure we will have a little bit more clarity on that about 10, 15 years from now, as we look back on the last few years, for sure. All right, moving on early bird or night owl early bird early bird i'm up early uh, uh sleeping uh, i'm sleep deprived i have some issues there uh but i'm i'm more alert i'm more effective i'm more impactful i'm stronger earlier and uh i like to go home and and call it a day at six o'clock well, nothing wrong with that all right rich time machine or magic wand uh i'd like a magic wand <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah just uh, let me be uh, aladdin i'm all over it there you go give, give me three genie wishes and uh, i'll call it a day that's awesome all right last question is not a this or that question but I, I i know you'll have an answer to this rich um what do do you how would you define as your superpower my superpower is leadership okay my superpower is motivation getting people to get on my back. I'm five foot seven. I'm a little guy, but uh, I love leading people. Uh, I love charging up the hill. Uh, I'm willing to get in and slug it out with everybody. I don't ask people to do stuff that I wouldn't do myself. And I just, uh, I can't win by myself. I love to share uh, victory parties together, drink champagne together. I, I don't like doing anything by myself. So it's it's winning as a team. That's awesome. It's funny. We Jan and I were talking about these questions beforehand. And we do that with all of the guests we're having on for the show this this week. And um, uh, that is the exact word that we picked for you as your superpower. So, you know, we love you, Rich Brocken. So, you know, right back at you. Right back yeah, at you guys. So be healthy, be safe, be happy, enjoy your friends and family. And yes. stay, in, stay in touch. Okay. Yes. Really, I, I wish you guys, you, you're very dear to me. You are. And I mean that uh, passionately. Yeah. Same to you. And thank you so much for your time, Mr. Brocken. Okay. Take care. Great insights as yeah. always. Bye. 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 All right. As we continue on in episode 200 of the WBNL of Wandering Without Lost podcast, we have another very special guest in the podcast studio, Lori Namazi. Lori and I have known each other for a long time. A long time. We worked together at a independently owned, operated uh, company here in Orange County, First Team Real Estate, uh, and uh, worked together for a number of years. And it was awesome to work side by side with Lori. I'm, and we haven't seen each other in a while. I'm excited to talk with you today. So why don't you just give everybody that's listening a little bit of background about, you know, kind of what brought you into real estate originally and kind of where you are now, because you have gone. It's been awesome to watch Lori grow in over over the years. Uh, and she has completely come out of the shell that she was in when I first met her and uh, blossomed not only into an executive within the company, but also now into her own business. So Lori, welcome and give us a little background. Well, gosh, thank you for that. It was a true delight working with you. And uh, I was telling Jan, you know, just one of the greatest guys you could ever work with. And in, in well, thank you. So it was such a great, a great part of my career. So I was in the restaurant business for about a decade and just realized, you know, gosh, I'm serving people. I love serving people, but I'm just serving them lunch. And I wanted <laughs> to do something more meaningful. And I had bought a house 
and I didn't know any of the questions to ask. And I said, well, if nothing else, let me get into this and, and learn about that process. And what I discovered was I loved this industry. Now, I didn't love selling. Uh, so I sold for a couple years and I did pretty well, but thank goodness for, you know, some lead management programs that I happily paid the referral fee for, because as Matt said, you know, I was, I was pretty shy, pretty much an introvert. Once you know me, I'm, I'm really good at opening up, but until you know me, I'm, I'm pretty well reserved. So, uh, I was, I was an active agent and then one of the transaction coordinators was moving to a new office we were opening. And I said, well, I would love to do that job because I loved the business and I loved the process. So I, I got into that and then um, ultimately moved up to the corporate office um, under um, a woman that um, had brought me in saw my experience, but I had to interview with Matt too. So that was my first time meeting mm -hmm. Matt and then yeah. had seen him across the company. Um, and that was just a great, a great first meeting so I was I was really excited to come to the corporate office and I ultimately was responsible for all of the office staff and all of the compliance for the company the first job was to take 25 transaction checklists and create one company list so that was quite the project and uh, it was a lot of fun and then the lady that I worked directly for um, left the company and then I worked with Matt for the next, I don't know, I think we worked together about six, six or seven years. Yeah, um, a long time. Yeah, it was and awesome. then after Matt left, I, I assumed some of his responsibilities, which was great because I already knew what to do because I had watched him. And I just kept working my way up in the company and, and I like to describe it as just accumulating responsibilities. <laughs> um, and, and ultimately having to ask for titles um, and then I became the corporate broker for over 1,800 agents and was responsible for all of the compliance for the entire wow. company. Yeah, and then I said, you know what? It's time for me to build my own legacy. I've been doing this now for 15 years for someone else, and it's time for me to do it. So I left. I, I had no plan, and I just said I need a break. And I, I did some soul searching and said, I know I had a lot of broker friends who would call me and ask me for advice. They were independent on their own and I don't know how to handle this. How should I handle it? And I realized there was an obvious void in our industry. There wasn't really anyone, at least in Southern California, who would offer that advisement and guidance. And so it's been such a treat to be able to help others start their own brokerage. That's awesome. Here we are today. There we go. Yeah. And you're also very active with the local real estate board, the state board, you're, you know, the women's council. I mean, you are very active in the real estate industry and community, which is an awesome thing too. Also a great way to pick up knowledge, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great uh, a business. I love that. Uh, supporting other brokers and helping them and learn all, with all that great background that you have. So we have these three questions we're asking our guest on our 200th episode. And the first question, you almost spoke to it there just a minute ago of about what do you feel is def you would like to be the answer to defining your real estate career and why? So it's kind of like the legacy question, but what defines your real estate career and why? Yeah, I mean, I, I did more or less kind of cover what I was going to describe. You know, my, my whole goal is to increase the level of professionalism in our industry. And I do that a couple of ways. My involvement, as Matt mentioned, um, very active in local, state, and national association of realtors. Um, last year in 2021, I was the president of our local association, which is the largest in the state and the 10th wow. largest in the nation. And, um, and then I'm also a professor at two junior colleges where I teach pre-licensing classes. Um, and then lastly, you know, starting my own advisement business, my consulting business, where I'm filling that gap and helping others because it's, you know, let's face it, it's so easy, relatively easy to get your broker's license and you, you pass the test today and tomorrow you can be on your own and you don't know what you don't know <laughs> until you're in the middle Hallelujah. of it going, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> Better exactly. call Lori. Exactly. <laughs> well, I love it. And in your whole your whole journey and your career has led you to exactly where you are, which is just a great story. And I love that. All right. So the next question, maybe we can you can answer this from the perspective of maybe the advice that you give agents, you're teaching pre-licensing. Um, you know, what's the best real estate tool or system that you think a real estate agent needs to be, or a broker actually, because we could have brokers listening. What you could whichever way you want to go with that question, Lori. What is the best thing? Why don't we go that way with it? What do you advise okay. brokers to set up system-wise or tools? Tool well, you know, it depends on 
what their ultimate goals are. So if they just plan on being out on their own, you know, that's a different need than if they plan mm -hmm. on growing a company with a dozen agents or a hundred right. agents, you know? So I have to really dig deep in what is their overall vision. And sometimes they think, well, I'll be on my own for a year. And if somebody comes and asks to work with me, then, you know, then I'll hire them. And that's usually what happens. You know, they have a good reputation and people say, wow, you're on your own. I want to go work with you. Um, so really, the, the question starts with what's the ultimate goal? Because you want to be able to scale, but you don't want to purchase something until you, to, to you need it. You know, if, if right. you are looking at a product that really supports 100 agents and you don't think you're ever going to have 100 agents, don't go that route. So for me, you know, I, I find this a, um, a kind of challenging question because I have never been about the shiny objects, the shiny new apps. Right. And with my background, I've always uh, steered clear of uh, let's go test a bunch of products. That is not who I am. I don't mm -hmm. want to be the person testing all the products. I know what I need. And maybe it's four features. I don't want to test 12 products who have 100 features uh, that I'm not going to use. So sadly, you know, the, the best tool that I personally use is Google. <laughs> it's Google Drive, everything Google. And it works for really? me. And if, if you don't want to get caught up in having to learn a product and um, uh, figure out all the bells and whistles and take the time, it's okay to do it old school. It's okay to use an Excel spreadsheet. Put it on Google Drive though, so you can access it from all your devices. But that's really the advice I give. I give my agents, uh, my broker clients, and and the other thing is, when it comes to accounting, you need to, you need to hire someone. Don't think you can do the accounting yourself. Great. Yeah, those, those are both that. Those are great. For, really. A good advice for individual broker. I mean, an agent or a team leader or something. But you know what? I love that you like the Google products. I mean, we're we're huge with that, and it is keeping it simple, and you yeah. can collaborate and communicate. And why not? You know, there's so many things that tie into that. All right, I love that. You know, answer. it's funny. Before you get to the next question, Jen, it is it, everyone we're talking to and everyone we talk to even outside of the podcast, obviously, you know, it is that overwhelming. There's so many things you can choose, right? And we always talk about, you know, narrow it down to the two or three things that are going to be the things that work best for you or your company or you feel most comfortable with. So, I mean, you hit the nail right on the head there. That's wild. And, and as being the brokers and, and you know, executives and from companies, you know, the tools there's hard, there's you, I know, you know, this, I think you're probably going to agree the adoption rate for all these, these things, the shiny new things are so low, you know, yeah. that that's the challenge. Everyone thinks the agents think they need all these things and then they don't use them anyway. And then right. the brokers get them because they think the agents want them. And it's this vicious cycle of using it for recruiting or whatever. And then um, no one's ever using them. So I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. Going the simple, really simple is good. better. Exactly. Less is more. Right. <laughs> And that's a really good point you make, because when I talk to brokers who decide to go out on their own, you know, we have that conversation. Why are you leaving the company you're leaving? And, you know, the top top three is I'm paying for a bunch of stuff I don't use. Yeah, good point. Yeah. And then when they're ready to hire agents, you know, they they panic because I ask them, what are you going to offer your agents? And they say, well, nothing. I said, well, at some point, they're going to want something. You need to figure out what it is they'll want. Um, so you can, hey, tap into the free resources that the MLS offers you or your local or the state association offers you because they've already, they're already paying for it for you. So right. don't be afraid to tap into those and then just offer it to the agents who want those things. But don't buy a product for all your agents nice. and, you know. One or two are going to use it. Let, let them it's know. funny because that the the tools from the board and the or the local uh, uh, association are always underutilized. Sure. I always. use them now for where yeah. I'm at. Yeah. To your point, and and then the large companies don't want their agents knowing about those tools because they want them using the tools that they are paying for, and that that vicious cycle happens. So I'm with you on that. Okay. So <laughs> last question. Last question is the what advice do you give best? You know, best. What's the best advice you you can we're asking this from, you know, give yourself if you're starting over, but your track is so, so intriguing to me in your doing pre-licensing. What is the best advice you give a new agent? Let's go with that. I'm going to ask, ask it that way. New okay. to the real estate business today. What's your best advice? Uh, trust yourself. Ah, trust yourself. Ask love a lot it. of questions. I mean, I, I sort of pictured this question being asked slightly different. So uh, that's the first thing that came out is, Trust yourself, but really ask questions. Ask the people who've gone through it. 
because there's no dumb question except for the, oh crap, I closed escrow yesterday and now I have this problem, what do I do? That's the, that's the bad question. That's the dumb question. Um, so just, you know, ask people for help. People, there are people like me, like you guys who want to be helpful. You'll find someone in your office who's just there to serve and, and will help. Um, the way I imagine this question being asked was more like, you know, looking back on my career, uh, what advice would I have given myself? And, and that's what my answer is, trust yourself. And I remember um, very distinctly when I was working with Matt, um, going into his office and he was just like, can you just trust yourself already? Stop coming in here asking Ooh. permission. You've got great instincts. Go do it. If it if it blows up, we'll fix it. Don't worry about it. Um, and and then uh, I sort of became known in the woman up industry uh, area. If you guys are familiar with California yeah. Association of Realtors Initiative, yeah. uh, yep. um, I just I found this quote online that. I really needed at a specific moment when I was applying for something really big and it was be the girl who decided to go for it. And so Ooh. if I could tell my 20 something year old self, when I first got into this business, just be the girl who decided to go for it. Um, I could have been so far further ahead in my career, but I use that as a guiding principle. Now it's just, if I'm on wow. the fence about something, it's just decide to go for it. What's, what's the worst that can happen? No, that is the perfect answer to that question. It Either really way, is. Whether you are at, you're telling your your uh, what you know now, the, your earlier self getting into the business, and it's also for someone who's there, and it's anybody actually. What I love that. It's the, the perfect anybody answer to that question, and it so encapsulates Lori and Amazi. I'm telling All you right, right now, bro. It All really, right. really so does. That's the serious questions, Matt. Over to you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, like I said, I've been so proud of just watching your whole trajectory anyway, Lori. And it's, just, it's, 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 I'm just so excited that you are where you are today. And you know what, you might have done things a little bit differently to expedite that time frame a little bit, you know, if you could go back and do it all over again, but wh whatever, you are where you need to be. And it's all you, you're the reason why you're there. So that's, that's freaking Thank awesome. You. All right. So we know a little bit about your background. We know your philosophy on some things, but I don't think we still really know the, uh, real Lori <laughs> Namazi yet. So um, I got to change one thing here really quickly uh, on my end here. Uh, and then um, we're going to ask you a couple rapid fire questions. Um, uh, so we get to know the real Lori Namazi. Okay, we're going to start out with the quintessential real estate question uh, that you, you know, I'm sure you get this question or you guide your agents and brokers down, on, uh, down this path. Um, buyers or sellers? Oh, that's hard. <laughs> Personally, I think it's more fulfilling working with buyers. That's, yeah. All right. Very good. Now, the follow-up to that, which I think is, you know, the logical follow-up. Dogs or cats? Oh, my gosh. I, I, I've had both. So I currently have a cat, but I, I've yeah. had dogs most of my life. I'm glad because, you know, I'm a cat lover and no one ever says cat. So congratulations on being a cat, a cat owner there. I did have to keep Max out of this room because he, he loves to just hang out in here with me and, and talk. Sometimes. All right. Beach house or cabin in the woods? Ooh, I'd go for the beach house, but I'm not opposed to the cabin that overlooks the lake. Best yeah, of both really. worlds. Yeah, I like that. All right. Work from the office or work from home? Oh my gosh, I'm such a middle of the road person on all of these. I like both. Honestly, I, I, I feel the energy more when I'm in an office with people. Yeah. That makes total sense. All right, I mean, I'm interested about this one. Are you an early bird or a night owl? I'm a total night owl. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to be getting up when it's dark and, and starting my day. No thanks. I'll sleep in and I'll, I'll stay till all hours of the night getting stuff done. Wow, that's cool. Love that. Okay. All right, Lori, time machine or magic wand? Ooh, that's an interesting one. Um, I, I guess I'd go magic wand. I think you have to go through what you go through to get to where you are, but if you could just make the future the way you want it to be without going through the struggles again, then okay. I like that. Good explanation. Okay, the last the last question is not a this or that. It's really more about you know just you. And I think everyone's got this. I'd like you to tell us, Lori, what your superpower is. What do you consider your superpower personally? Oh my gosh, um, 
being calm. Ooh, I love it. That's people, huge. Yeah, being calm is my superpower. I had an employee once tell me it. She's always frantic. And she'd run into my office, you know, sky is falling. And I would just sit there and say, we don't have enough information to be that concerned yet. And she, she once told me a bomb could go off right outside my office window and I wouldn't even flinch. And I think that's true. I, I don't think I would should. I would agree that you work very well under pressure like that because we you know we, there was a lot of chaos at times when we worked together and uh, mm -hmm. you know the calmer minds always prevail so I would I would agree that that, that is your superpower and you <laughs> execute on that brilliantly. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. <laughs> well, Lori, thank you so much for joining us today. You know, it, like I said, I've already said three times and I'm going to say it again. You know, Jeannie, from where you where I met you to where you are today is a phenomenal uh, uh, journey and excursion, excursion. And you uh, you're an inspiration. You're an inspiration to me. And I, I am just so happy that you joined us today. Oh, well, thank you. you Thanks know, for your I, insights. Thank you. It's been a real treat. And, uh, you know, we we get to where we are with the influence of people in our lives. So please take a little bit of the credit for helping me get to where I am today. You were a big part well, of it. So thank you. I don't know and about that. You guys thank, doing... thank you very much for that. <laughs> well, you guys are doing some great things. I've enjoyed watching you. Congratulations on the 200th episode. And gosh, I don't even know how many years now you guys have been doing this, just trying to do the same thing, increase the level of professionalism and, and have fun with it. So thank you. Awesome. All right. Thank awesome. you, Lori. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Our next guest on our 200th episode is Paul Holub. Thank you so much for joining us, Paul. Well, Paul and I know each other a couple of years, three years now, I think, that we've been doing coaching and stuff together and been tracking your career. You've got, uh, you know, you've been doing team building and you, you, you always have somebody that's been working with you. So to me, that is a team, no matter whether you want to build a big team or not. So I'll get you to talk a little bit about that in, in, in a second as well. But thanks, Paul, for joining. And can you just tell a little bit more? You're in the Houston area, but just to give us a little bit more backstory. How'd you get in the real estate business? How long you've been doing it and so forth? Yeah, thanks, Jan. I've uh, been in real estate since 2013. Um, came from an education background and uh, enjoyed enjoyed that. You know, want to be a teacher and coach, and <clears throat> but decided I wanted to make a little more money for my family and uh, also had a passion for real estate investing. So seem like a good fit and uh, yeah, I have loved it since. And honestly, that is the approach you take anyway to how you work with your clients as a, as a coach and trainer and you're doing it in your videos and all that. So well done. Make sure you check out Paul's uh, info, which will be in the show notes and you can go check out his YouTube. I'm so jazzed about how well he's doing on his YouTube channel and you can go follow him and Get up to speed with what's happening in the Houston market in case you're interested, because it's one of the hottest markets. Go. Texas is, I was just reading some uh, news uh, here in Florida about how Texas is actually in Florida are two of the biggest states in the last year that's had the migration of people in, internally in the country moving, you know, to either Texas. I think Texas is first, actually. And then Florida is right behind it. So we're going to, so we're going to, we have a couple questions for you. I'm going to ask you those and just whatever comes to mind, just go for it. And then Matt's got a, got a couple fun questions to ask you. We'll let you, by now, if you've been listening, you know what those questions are going to be, but Paul does not know. So, <laughs> so uh, it, maybe we just touched on it, but what would you say defines your real estate career and why, you know, what do you yeah. want to be known for in real estate? Yeah, that's a tough question. Um, I was thinking about that. You know, I, I think persistence, you know, when I first started, I, my first uh, year I made like $20,000 and that was gross. Um, but every year just kind of kept getting better and getting better and growing it. And, you know, you know how it is, uh, the, the drop offs pretty steep, you know, from my in, entering class after like five years, there's only a, a handful of agents still practicing. And most yeah. of those were just kind of, you know, a deal here and there. So I think just being persistent and, um, you know, growing and, and learning uh, the business has been, I guess, kind of the defining part for me, I guess. And not quitting and not giving up, right? And always yeah. re reworking and, and adapting to the times, which is really part of what we have to do in this business, right? It's always moving and adjusting. And that's part of your persistence, I think. I agree. That's awesome. All right. Next question is, what is the best real estate tool or system that you swear by or you use that you would recommend to other people? It can be anything. Yeah, um, I was going to want to talk about just a simple system uh, that I have for staying in touch with my clients, uh, my past clients and sphere of influence. 
I, I just do four touches a year. Uh, first touch is just kind of a CMA. Hey, these are all the homes sold in your neighborhood. Um, if you have any questions or need help protesting taxes, let me know. And it's a great touch. Just just reach out, check in how people are doing. Mm -hmm. um, my second touch, I do a client party and it's just a family photo shoot. You know, we you know, hire a photographer and get my lender bring in some food. And um, yeah, we, we have a it's very simple, but it just gives me a reason to call and check in. And, um, you know, it's a great idea. Can you host a you host a uh, bring your people, bring your family and stuff and we're going to do a photo for you or you, you give them a photo. Yeah. And um, yeah, awesome. super simple. We send them the digital, digital images and then um, I'll print up like a eight by 10 and just write a little note. Hey, thanks for coming. So great awesome. to see you guys. And it's, it's very simple, but it's, it's real, it's personal and you know, people need to update their family photos. So there's a, there's a value. Awesome. To that. And, okay. um, so, you know, it's tough to do the selfie and then hang that on the wall. Um, yeah. And then in August, September, just kind of a check-in after summer. And then I do a client party. Well, um, you know, pre COVID I did a private uh, client party and that was kind of the bigger one. We do barbecue and live music and do a uh, pie. It would be the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. And, um, yeah, I was thinking about that when I first did it, I, I did a, a casino party and I thought, Oh, all these people are going to show up. You know, there's everyone knows me and loves me. They come to this casino party. So I had like all these tables and I was expecting like a hundred, 150 people. And I had like 20 people show up and uh, about a quarter of them were my family members. And uh, it was so embarrassing. Um, but over the years, you know, that kept growing and growing, and growing to before COVID. My last one was like 220 people. And so Whoa. It was slow and Whoa. steady. Um, but the nice thing about that is that when you do those client parties, you invite you know, your clients, even some prospective clients, they're all like, look, you work with all these people. And I was like, yeah, in, in some way or the other, you know, whether a referral or a past client or, you know, your sphere of influence. And um, yeah, and that's just kind of like solidifies the mind. Hey, this guy or gal's legit, you know, that he's um, a professional, they're in the business to help people. And all these people wouldn't show up here if, if they didn't believe in you. So it's kind of a cool little way to solidify in someone's mind that, okay, you're, you're serious. And it's also a great way to give back. Do you know what I love about what you just shared? You don't have to overcomplicate it. You just shared four things you consistently do. And I know that you've been, you've talked to me about some of those ideas before and people are like, will be like, are we going to do this? And they look forward to it. And you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't come across as a salesy thing. It's serving your clients and having fun and, and giving back. And, and I mean, it's easy, right? It's an easy yeah. way to stay in touch with people. I mean, it takes work to put all that together, oh, yeah. but it, but it, and you know, so that's cool. So you've already had the, post COVID here this last, this year, we're really kind of whatever we're, wherever we are in it, but you did do that photo shoot this year, right? Didn't you do that family photo shoot? Did that go well? Yeah, I, I, I did last year and uh, that went well. So we'll be I doing mean, that's what I meant last year. Yeah. Next couple months. Um, okay. So yeah. It's been, uh, that's good. Cause it's just, you know, a couple of families at a time and then it's, you know, say hi. They have appointments. They trouble out. So it's not, yeah. it's not hanging around for a long time. Um, particularly if they're in their nice clothes, they don't want to <laughs> get Yeah, exactly. Ready. All right, cool. See that great idea is there. Steal those ideas. R&D, right? Rip off and duplicate. That's what we do here. We like to share. Uh, you just got to make it happen. All right, last question is, if you were to, knowing what you know now, what what's the advice that you might give yourself if you were starting over in the business again? You know, what's the best advice you'd give yourself starting out as a brand new agent? Is there anything you would wish you have done dif done differently? Yes. So many things. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think a, lot, a lot of people, they always look for the shiny object stuff, right? Oh, let me try this and that lead generation system. And, and I think that's, that's good, particularly when you're starting out, you're not quite sure what you want to do. You know, I've done for sale by owners and, you know, lead calls and whatever. Um, you know, but I think if, um, and there, there are good, but I think, uh, one thing that would really would help me if I had the mindset, like, can I see myself doing this 10 years from now? Yeah, You know, like have that long-term mindset, like mm. calling people on their birthdays is great, but you know, can I keep that up for 10 years you know, for mm. the long run and see that multiply where people expect a call or, you know, on their birthday. So I think having that mindset um, really would have helped me like, Ooh, no, I don't like these things. Let me just really focus in and narrow down to these particular, these mm. particular buckets of lead generation. And so that's, um, yeah, so that's kind of what I would have done. And that would save me a lot of time and, and money. Headaches. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty great sage advice about, I like the way you said it. Can I see myself doing this 10 years from now? 
would would I still enjoy it? Would it still be something because it, it's it's this theme of of persistence that you brought up, but it can be simplicity, like less is more, a quality something that you're doing that you're being persistent and consistent with is going to have a bigger payoff than than trying to bounce around and try different things, right? You know, Absolutely. so. But when you're new, you don't know all of that, you know. So I mean, you have to try things. But I like the idea that that you would you would say like you know think long term. That's pretty yes. cool. I love it. Okay, awesome. Yeah, it's pretty right, awesome. Matt, you're, 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 the- you're you're clearly client centric, which is awesome, which has kept you you going right with your with your uh, your business, which is which is fantastic. And I love that that um, you know you have been persistent, right? From 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 friends and family to two over two hundred at your event. That is a huge. That's right. uh, step forward. So it's the persistence on that is fantastic. So we, we know a little bit about, you know, kind of where you come from and where your mindset is. Uh, but I think there's still a little bit more we can dig into to uh, find out the uh, real real poll. So we're going to ask you some rapid fire questions now to get to know you just a little bit better. We're going to start off with a uh, the classic real estate question, Paul. Uh, buyers or sellers? Uh, I'd say both. Um, I like buyers just because it's like, you're there in their life, you know, and so many times I've been like the first or second person they've told that, Hey, we're pregnant. It's like, Oh, that's awesome. Why are you telling me first? You know? <laughs> so the fun little things like that. Um, wow. kind of both. Yeah. In charge of the, the gender reveal at your next party. I don't, yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> but, hey Matt, would you, Paul, would, would you be surprised to know that of all the folks that we've inter- we've interviewed, I would say the majority of them prefer buyers. Even though yeah. many know that sellers is a list to last kind of thing, but I would say majority of people have said they enjoy working with buyers better. It's interesting. Yep. Yeah, it's Absolutely. fun. I mean, it's the ups and downs of it, but you get to know them yep. a little better. You know, then there's yep. the stress of being a, a listing agent, like, hey, why haven't you sold my house? You know, yep. so just Good a point. different different stress. All right. Exactly. All right. Next question to really get to know Paul. Dogs or cats? <laughs> Dogs. That was easy. Okay. <laughs> exactly. There wasn't even a hesitation there. We have we have a almost eighty pound golden retriever, so we're we're definitely a dog family. All right. Yeah, there I would say go. that's the case, right? Yeah. Are you a beach house or cabin in the woods guy? Oh, beach house. I love the beach. Beach house yep. is winning the uh, poll in this one as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. Great. Hey, Paul, work from the office or work from home? Now, for a real estate agent, you know, obviously, you get you so you can stay in the office all the time. But if you had your druthers, where would you be? Uh, I like my office because it's quiet and I can focus, you know, I can go to the office and work there and then I go home and I'm at home, you know, so I try to be very present, you know, and that helps me to really be focused. Love that. Good. Yeah, focus, focus is what it's all about. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Early bird. I would have guessed that. <laughs> all right. Time machine or magic wand? Oh, wow. That's fun. Uh, magic wand. Magic wand. <laughs> it was unanimous, I think. Yeah, I think that is the, the unanimous answer. <laughs> and then the last question we have in rapid fire actually is around really a this or that, but it's really more about you and how you uh, you look at yourself. What do you consider your superpower? Oh, jeez. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I have a superpower. <laughs> um, I think you probably said it already. Yeah, I guess persistence. Just mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. if if that's one, I mean, it's well, it's whatever you think it is. Is if if people were asking, what is this quality like? What would you think people would say if you asked the people closest to you, what is the quality that you have that's unique? That's you know, that's what we merely mean by superpower. That is the thing that everyone to a person would go like, Paul is X. Um, I don't know, Paul has this or that or. Yeah, good question. Uh, maybe uh, trustworthy. You know, mm-hmm. you know, loyalty. Uh, humility. That's like that's anything. what it is. <laughs> that would definitely be one. <laughs> yes. Right on. Okay. Very good. Love it. Yep. That's it. Humble. No superpower. <laughs> no, that is a superpower. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So uh, that would that's it. We just wanted some great advice, and I'm going to tell you right now. The, the, you, you do majority of, actually, Paul's one of the few real estate agents that I've known over the years that really actually knows his numbers. When he shares his uh, spreadsheets that he keeps on where his numbers come from, I'm like, wow, that's freaking awesome. Because you'll say, but his majority comes from past clients and database, but it's not only that. You know, it's a, it's the big share, right? And you really know that. But it's do you liken that to, obviously, 
the way you take care of people in the business that you get referrals, but it's, it's, is it a lot to do with just the way that you've been staying in touch with them over the years? Um, from the different, sorry, no, just from your database. I just want to hone oh. in on that. Like you, you, the biggest chunk of your pie is, I think it was 70%, maybe 65, if I remember correctly, came from repeat and past clients or people referring you. That yeah, you're right. Two thirds, past uh, mm -hmm. clients and referrals. Absolutely. And it's just from doing what you've been doing, nothing over the top, right? Just staying in touch with them and taking care of them. Yeah, uh, that's that's it. And then, you know, I used to is, try, try the Popeyes and try this and that, and it's all great. But, you know, I just, I've kept up with these things and it's been consistent. So there you go. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your time today and for participating and being part of our, two, I started to say 20th, 200th episode Keep up the great work on uh, YouTube that you're doing there in Houston. And I know that market is uh, crazy like all the other markets, but uh, I, th I love that. If you want to get a good a sense of how to do videos correctly, go check out his channel for real. We'll put the links to it in the show notes, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you. And congratulations on 200 episodes. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty fun. All right. Thanks, Paul. Talk to you soon. Sure. Okay. Okay. have the great pleasure of getting to speak to a newer friend of the show and of, of Matt and I's Jenny. Well, actually a couple years now we've been, we've, we've been friends and we met Jenny Polk through our coaching company and so forth and work with her a little bit with her awesome. She's a broker, but she's not always been a broker. So I want to turn, th first of all, Jenny, thanks for joining us. Yeah. I'm so excited to get your insights. You're out in Long Beach, but why don't you tell our audience a little bit about your journey and how got how you got to this place of owning a brokerage? Um, by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we, we always have um, um, dreams and curious of the future, but my career started um, when I was 19 years old. And we actually, um, I married early. Um, I had three kids before I was 25 and we were in the real estate world. We weren't selling real estate, but we were providing value in real estate. And back then it was, you know, you, you listened to Floyd Wickman, which we just mentioned, you listened to Mike Ferry mm -hmm. and you did whatever they said, and you were going to be this most successful agent. Well, we were part of that crew where I was selling top producer uh, software and uh, my ex-husband and I, and um, part of his family was selling uh, the personal marketing aspect. So we would travel with them. They'd say, go to the back of the room, get top producer, get a computer, wow. do personal marketing. And they would flock, flock to us yeah. because they were, they were, they were excited for what they were told, but now that they had to implement it. And that was the, that was always an issue. So that got me into teaching. So then I'm like, we need to, we need to figure this out a little bit further. We sold them this stuff. Now we got to teach them how to use it. Mm -hmm. So once we taught all these amazing realtors how to use it, um, we said, well, we can do the same thing. So got our license, um, wow. kind of history. After my divorce, I had to reinvent myself. Um, we were actually working by referral, but didn't know it. I didn't know about Joe Stump. I didn't know about um, Brian Buffini. I didn't, didn't realize we were actually doing what they recommend, but we were, we were just doing it on our own, so to speak. So when, after my divorce, um, I had to reinvent the wheel, start over, start getting my own leads, start cultivating my, my past clients that I had had previously. Um, started coaching with Brian, um, found a home that I was happy with as far as a brokerage was concerned. And, um, just sold a lot of real estate and had a really good time doing it. Um, never bought a lead in my life. So I don't even know what that's like. Wow. I, wow. I understand the pressures of it and I teach it as a broker. Um, but I, I mostly based um, um, with relational and referral um, business and try to teach the agents that. And then um, came across a dear friend who you knew very well, um, who we went into business together. Um, he unfortunately passed away. It was a year ago, February 12th. So just last week. Wow. Um, I know. Amazing. Um, and, and I became a broker with him and we had um, set forth some dreams that of our own that we wanted to accomplish. Um, so I'm still on track for that, but this time I'm not a franchise. This time okay. we are our own brokerage and my partners and I um, couldn't be, couldn't be happier and things just, you know, they happen the way they happen. 
so all this experience from trainer to CRM, doing it yourself, being a broker, really a training and coaching broker. And I love that about how you, how you handle all your folks. How many folks are in your company now? Where are um, you? In, and you service Long Beach in the surrounding area, right? Yeah, we we just hired on um, five new agents this week. And wow! I'll be honest with you, Jim. Don't re- thank you, Matt. We don't recruit. Um, we you attract. We, we don't. Yeah, we yep. we basically are very picky on who we we provide um, um, our um, brokerage to. We um, <laughs> we want ethical, moral hardworking um, individuals that want to run their business like a business. And I think that's where we're lacking um, as an industry. We're so transactional that that's all you're going to get. And I feel we're lacking um, an education and, and, and tracking that. Um, so right now to answer your question, we have 78 agents and growing um, and all organically, which is very cool. Awesome. And Jenny, they're engaged because we, we, you know, we do training with with companies of all across the United States. And really, honestly, and I'm not just saying this because you're here. You really, your people are always more engaged than any other company that we do training. Oh, wow. It's really, well, it's good. exciting. I it was really actually is. a little disappointed. Training. I'm like, hey, everybody's got to be on this. But you know, everybody's journey is different, and I think that's what's so frustrating as a broker is you expect them to. Um, to treat the business the way you treat the business and everybody's, mm-hmm. everybody's different. So you can, you know, we, we, we have a checklist. We have like, you know, five essential things. And if we can get at least three out of the five out of oh, an man. individual, we're happy, but yeah, um, yeah. I'd like to see more, you know, I would like to yeah. see more, but life happens. And yeah. well, your, your journey is awesome. I'm very excited about where everything that you've been doing. And so we're going to ask you three questions and you can answer these from a broker perspective as an agent, whatever comes to mind. Okay. okay. So what's our, our first question is what defines your real estate career and why? And, and this to me is like the legacy question. You can almost think of it as what do you, you almost talked about it a little bit there in your yeah. introduction of yourself, but what would, what do you want to be remembered as, 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 you know, your real estate career meaning? Oh God. What I would love to be remembered as is a broker that was always there for their agents. I mean, I mean, literally, and um, I'm sure there'll be a day, you know, when we get to 300 agents that, you know, I'm only one person, but I, I'm, I am, truly vowing to to keep that reputation going to always be that one that they can count on um when we were going through all these transitions these last um year and a half um trust me the only thing that was on my mind wasn't the money it wasn't re- my reputation it wasn't what are people going to think it, it is the agents um we have to make sure that they're taken care of we need to make sure that the transition after lewis's death and the, and the trans transition into proper will be smooth and easy for them. I, I literally would go to sleep at night and you know, this as a realtor, when we have a transaction, we know is going South and Oh my God. And the next morning you got to call your client, you're dreading it. Cause you're just like, Oh, am I going to let them down? And I, that's how I feel about my agents. So my agents now are my, that's it. They're my clients and I have to take very good care of them. And I've witnessed other brokerages that, that, that pawn them off on others. And um, so I, I'm, that that is my um, I hope what defines me in my career and my why it will always be, um, you know, financial freedom and and and, you know, um, helping my kids. You know what I mean? Just, awesome. just really yeah. carrying it on. Well, And I'm pretty certain that is exactly how okay. you ran your real estate business or you're still when you're doing transactions. Yeah, and I, I love that you said your, your clients, you have clients. And then as a broker, your clients are the real estate agents who, who then have clients. Mm-hmm. Right. So and you're serving them, then you're serving the, the end client as well. Yep. That's a great answer. OK, I awesome. Think, I think brokers, I think there is a um, um, I've, heard, I've actually lost a couple of agents that um, I adored. Uh, adored. Um, when I first started the brokerage, I'm like, I know they'll come on board with me. And they, there, there was only two of them and they were kind of in cahoots and I love them to death to this day, but they were saying that I'm a competing broker. I said, how um, am I a competing broker? Um, that's impossible because I'm not soliciting business. I'm not, you mm-hmm. know, I'm not farming. I'm not doing anything. All I did was cultivate 30 years of business. And now it comes to me. And if anything, I think all brokers need to be active agents so they can truly understand what the agents are going through. 
I agree with you. And you can be in the business when you get so far removed. I've, I've known brokers and managers who are so far removed from doing a transaction. They've really lost track of what it's like to do the real yeah. estate or be up to speed. It's different than yeah. managing and being aware of rules or whatever too. And right. you can do it without competing. And to me, that sounds like language from someone else that was trying to recruit them away from me. I, I would That's like right. to say, I, I laugh at that now. And I'm like, well, right. if that's your reason, then, then stay where exactly. you're Exactly. Well, and you know what? People sometimes just don't want you to feel bad. So they're just going to tell you whatever. So yeah. <laughs> next. All right. And next question is, what's the best real estate tool or system you use or you recommend for your agents? Oh, you my gosh. Your, well, you know what? We, we did the opposite. We being that my partners and I have, we are all um, gifted in certain areas of the business. Um, I don't dare go into Paul's corner. Um, I don't want to be, I'm not a, you know, a, a contracts, um, I mean, not DRE contracts, but you know, um, um, the behind the scenes, um, you know, matrix of a, of a, of a um, running the business. He handles all of that. Um, I mean, we do a lot together, but um, I think that we've done a great job of, figuring out what the agents need other mm -hmm. brokerages. And I've only been, you know, involved with three in my career. Um, one in my infancy was there Remax, is. and I don't really remember those days. That was like in the nineties and things have changed so much. <laughs> and once was a small hiatus at Prudential after my divorce, cause I need to hang my license somewhere. And then, and then before owning my own brokerage, I was at KW for a little bit mm -hmm. and all, I mean, all have done an amazing job for whatever market they're trying or agent they're trying to capture. No, you know, I, you know, all due respect. I think that's great. But what sure. we've learned is that you, you, you're throwing 50 apps at them. You're throwing 50 tools at them. And, and with very little training, how can, you know, I always say it's, you know, you, you give them that much, they're going to do it half ass. You give them three, hopefully they can, you know, perfect it a hundred percent. So that was where we went with that. We have, um, I think captured a great CRM, which we use Synchro. Um, so I think that one is essential and, and huge for the business. The agents just don't know it yet. They don't understand it. So that's yeah. our constant too. battle. Well, it, it sounds like your career has been that you you were working with a, a you know software company that 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 and then the challenges back then and it still is to this day it's the implementation right and, and getting everybody to realize it's the the CRM you know like I think they get afraid they're afraid of it it's too much work but honestly if they don't use it everything's up here in right. their head and that's where the balls get dropped. Well, and you so know, it's like how can you cater? to so many personalities. Um, some are very simple minded as far as I don't, I'm, I'm just going to order my stuff. I don't need any marketing. I'll, I'll just have somebody, I'll pay someone to do it. Yeah, then there's, yeah. ones who, like, I want to do it myself. Then there's ones who are happy using um, a spreadsheet. You know, I'm like, what, exactly. you know, they don't understand. So um, we came up with one that's robust and one that is more user friendly. So those two are essential. Um, I, we love rate my age. And I think that's a wonderful, um, um, tool. We also um, use Canva, which we love. Oh yeah. Um, there's, of you course, know, we as do we. Yeah. Um, honestly, we haven't reinvented the wheel. No, they there have, you go. They have an amazing mobile app. They have amazing CRM. They have amazing marketing. They don't have to do anything. There they you have, go. Um, Simplify. Robust, yeah, and they have robust training. We have you every other month. You know what? I really, I think that's brilliant because it's like you just use Canva you know, go embrace your CRM and just get out there and do some business and let that other stuff do the heavy lifting. Right. It's brilliant. All right. I love it. That's great insight. Uh, and congrats, you know, congratulations on the way you're simplified stuff to do it. All right. And so this is like, if you were two ways you can go with this being a broker, but if, what's the best advice you would either give yourself and what you know now? I love this question where you're like, if we knew what we knew now, what would we have done differently? Or you can look back at on what would you have done differently? Or you can even go down the path with us, Jenny, on what's the best advice you give an agent that's new to the business right now? Because that's we have a lot of people that are new that listen. And, you know, what would you recommend to them, which could be also the advice that you give yourself for getting starting fresh in the business? I think they need to trust their gut, number one, if it feels right and the brokerage feels right, um, chances are you're going to do quite well. I feel that um, we are, you know, I just was telling a new agent yesterday, I said, look, I said, if you're looking for, um, yeah, they always say they want training. And so I asked, well, what do you mean by training? Give me your definition of training. 
because I can't train you on this business. I really can't. It is not cookie cutter. I can't put you in a classroom like everybody else Mm -hmm. and expect you to be this wonderful agent. The only way you are going to be good is if you show up, be present, take what we're offering. You know, you can't lead a, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Mm -hmm. Be there and also, also get down and dirty. You just got to jump in. You just got to jump in. And I think that's like the, their biggest fear. Um, but we've all started out we've all been there, you know? Um, so my biggest advice to them is, is, is show up, be present. And we guarantee them and promise them we're not shoving them in a classroom. And I used to teach in those classrooms. I used to be part of, um, the trainings of Ignite and go through those things with some of the other brands. And it's great. You know, you're giving them good content and then they leave, but don't know what to do. Exactly. They leave completely confused. Um, they wrote the, the notes down. They wrote what they heard, but now they have to implement it. So our, our um, we're, we're trying, I'll be honest with you too. We don't have a lot of new, new agents. Most of our agents do come with um, experience. So it makes my job a little bit easier. Um, but I love the new agent because I love their excitement. I love yeah. their, their, you know, their willingness to learn. Um, and there is a lot of hand holding, so I do like that part of the business. So no, that's I'm, that trainer in you, the trainer coach. There yeah, you are. I like. All it. right, excellent. Some great tips. All right, Matt, it's going to be over to you now to for a little levity, a little fun. Yeah. Well, clearly, you this the expression. You know, if you build it, they will come. You have embraced that, and focusing on the agent is, is so interesting because a lot of real estate companies and offices don't know where to focus their time. Right. So they they focus it all over the place. So congratulations, I applaud you for doing that because you have stake. You put the stake in the ground, right? That the agents are what are driving you. And driving it hasn't you. been easy. Look, we, we we make mistakes all the time, and we're always constantly um, brainstorming to. Yeah. Do and can right. I just shout out to the name of your company? I mean, yeah. it's cool. proper real estate. I mean, yeah, what do you know? Just proper. And it's, it's, it's just proper. And it was our, 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 our slogan is real estate done proper. Yep. And, um, and you know, you can use proper in a lot of ways. <laughs> we always say no pun intended, no pun intended, but proper comes up in our, our dialogue and language all the time. Well, I bet it does. All right. So yeah. we, we, we learned a little bit about your background. We know a little bit about what kind of brought you where you are today, but I don't know that we really still know the real Jenny Polk. So we're going to ask you a few questions here, Jenny, okay. to see where you really land, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, with everybody else that we're talking to today on the 200th episode of our podcast. So first up, you know, the 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 consummate real estate question, uh, buyers or sellers? Sellers. <laughs> okay. I love buyers. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, in this market, I, I, I just sympathize with everyone in this market right now. Sure. I like both. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I, I, the, I love preparing a home. I love the, um, um, you know, getting getting the price point right. I love, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, yeah, I, I, totally. I, yeah. All right. Follow up question to buyers and sellers, of course, most logically uh, dogs or cats? Dogs. Cool. Quick. <laughs> Stick into it. Very good. <laughs> dogs, yes. Beach house or cabin in the woods? Oh, man. Can I both? Beach mm, house. Yeah. that, Jenny. I don't know. I like both. I'm half. I'm a half or halfer, but I I live near the beach, so I'm gonna say beach house. All right, very good. Uh, work from home or work from the office? I think you can do both. I, I will tell you that I was very productive during COVID when we were st- when we were home. Um, very productive, and that's very hard for most people. Um, there's a lot of distractions. I get it. I get it. Um, but I like both. I like being in the office because I like to see everybody. You know. Yeah, there's something about the human thing that we did lose. So yeah, it's nice to be back when piece. you get back in that for sure. Yeah. All right. Early bird or night owl? Night owl. Mm. This is I one of our favorites. I had a feeling on that. Yeah. Time machine or magic wand? Oh, um, I'm happy in my present time. So I'll say magic wand. <laughs> okay, very good. Yeah, January, we go back and forth on this. Because, you know, if you got the magic wand, you can always wish yourself. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. All right. This next one really isn't a this or that, but everybody has one of these, and I think everybody knows what their uh, what this is to them. And we would, I'd be very curious to know what you think your superpower is, Jenny. What is your superpower? Multitasker, I think. Ah. Um, I that's just how my brain works. I can do twenty things at once, and I know that's like sometimes shunned and you know, probably not uh, um, liked by many, but I can, I can do that successfully. So that's my superpower, I think. Yeah, that's a great superpower. I think that's one everyone really, wishes they really had. Good hugger too. I love hugs. In so this I'll day and age, you, you almost have to have that swivel head and handle things, especially in the role you have. Yeah. You got to bounce well, around you know, and be able to handle it all. Right, right. In the beginning, when you are, um, when you are, you know, um, when the brokerage is a baby, you have to wear multiple hats um, yep. until you can afford to, um, you know, pass that along. So right now we, we all multitask. So, And we do want to say, Jenny, thank you for recommending this book. Okay. Yeah. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Bleep. bleep Mark bleep. Benson, go get this book. It's really awesome. It's it really, really funny. Is. The guy is the, the, and she, we were doing a training together and you brought this up and I was like, I got to go get that book. Well, I, I love this book. Uh, and I, I like his videos as well. There's something about an actual book. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is why I, I didn't actual. I didn't download it. I bought it. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and you yeah, know why? I, I, says, I like to mark it up. I'm like, I've, I've highlighted yeah. things. I'm a highlighter in, in the we, we, um We're going to start back up with our book club, but we did have a book club um, with the agents. And um, <clears throat> I would, um, we had our very, very first book club was um, um, Chop Wood, Carry Water. And I don't know if you read that one. Such mm -hmm. an easy read, but my God, you can read it from cover to cover, probably in a couple of hours if you're a good reader. Wow. Um, and it was so... Um, fulfilling that book and we did a book club on it and um, it was it was a really therapeutic book club and it was all the agents and myself and it was really fun so I think we might do a few chapters of that one well this one's great this is yeah, all about okay. being really fine-tuned and focused on what is important to you and with and all those factors yeah. and all the things that we have in our world it's really great advice right. you guys I the older I get the more I don't care <laughs> and I, I had a good way. It's like, I really yeah, you care about the things that are important. That. Right, right. I used to care Everything's so much about not important. what like, our competitors were doing or what they had and what we didn't. Mm -hmm. And now I don't even care. Someone will ask me, do you know so-and-so? I'm like, no, I don't. No. Because I, I'm just focused on this. I'm focused on you. I'm focused awesome. on what we're doing. You just got to do what's proper, right? Ooh, good yes, one. Do what's proper. Well, Miss Jenny, thank you so much for sharing you. your insights. This, this is fun. excellent. Oh, it was awesome fun. And we appreciate you being on our 200th episode. Thank, thank you. you. I'm honored and I'm grateful for you both. So thank you very much. All right. we'll see you we'll soon. See Well, you know, the 200th episode would not be complete if we didn't interview and have a great conversation with one of our longtime friends and probably most frequent guests on the podcast, Brown David Boy. Squire. All right. So David, David and I know each other a long, long time, a long time. We don't even want to talk about it. I was his broker. He's brought, you know, we've coached each other through the years. Matt, you met him through when we were all working together. Um, yeah, David, 10 years so ago. Much. Thanks yeah. so much for joining us. But why don't you give people a little bit more of the backstory of how did you get in the business and how long you've been doing this? And then we'll get into these questions. Okay. Sure. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I, um, I have a, I have a restaurant background. My family's a restaurant family. We own uh, restaurants. Uh, my grandmother was a chef. I grew up in the restaurant industry. My first job was in the restaurants. In fact, my family still owns restaurants. And, um, and it was kind of a great segue into real estate. You know, the two just, as most people know that have been in the restaurant business, the two just work, fit like a glove. And so in the 80s, um, someone inspired me to get into real estate. I did. And uh, as a matter of fact, as Jan mentioned, she was one of my first brokers in the 80s. Oh uh, we're that old, believe it or not. I mean, you know, so. No, we're not. No, we're not. no, no. So, uh, yeah, the interest rates were, I was looking at the, the history of interest rates and they were uh, still above 10%. I think they were closer to 11% when I started and yeah. that changed and they dropped below 10%. Jan, you remember, and we were doing backflips. I mean, that was the greatest thing we'd ever seen exactly. below 10%. Woohoo! Right. So, uh, so anyway, we're going up. Pardon me. 
sales are going to go up now. The interest rates are below 10. Okay, yeah, right. Exactly. So we, um, so we somehow thrived and, uh, and I, I, I pretty much worked through every aspect of real estate. That would be resales, new homes. I, I didn't sell, I've never sold much commercial. I did a lot of land. Uh, and I, and I, I, I liked, I'd like to say that I was, I d explored all aspects of real estate. I was a thriving single agent. I was a starving single agent. I was a thriving mega team. And, you know, we did, you know, 200 deals a year for a few years in a row there. And I was the most, the starvingest of all uh, team owners as well. So the short sales and REO side, uh, kind of helped me survive and my team survived my very 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 small team survive in the downturn and and we learned 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 uh now i'm mostly coaching i still have a team in the trenches so that keeps everything relevant for me and before that you missed the part about being a great broker and managing offices yeah. and yeah. all of that all of that okay. I was a broker yeah i forgot and I always back to the coaching right that's yeah, I was good. a broker for a few years. I worked in the corporate world with uh, mm -hmm. Matt and Jan yeah. and um, experienced that side of the business. And uh, I was an owner actually for a while too. So yeah, I've, right. I, I've, I've kind of seen it all. You had and, every hat. And it really does help. It does help in coaching because it's re everything's relevant. You know? That's yeah, right. big picture. So with that said, the first question is what defines your real estate career and why and or think of it as what's your legacy that you're leaving behind in all this uh wearing of all the hats what 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 would you say is the the definition of what your real estate career has been about my career has has evolved jan that's that's a that's a good and interesting question it, it it really has evolved at one point i thought real estate was the vehicle to get me to the financial position i wanted to get to it allowed me to live the life I wanted to live, certainly living the life of liberty. I, I, I use that a lot, living the life of liberty, which is not just the superficial answer, which is canned and it's, I'd love to be in the position to make decisions regardless of their financial consequences. That's kind of a canned answer. However, somewhat true. Liberty is a better way to say it for me. And yeah. that that is, I sleep better at night. I, um, I'm able to, of course, live the life uh, that I want to live. And then, of course, th my big vision uh, brings my family and the legacy I leave behind into the picture. And, and that's what's really evolved my career into the coaching side is because that's, I'm most passionate. And, and I know it sounds cheesy and it's really true. I, I love affecting people in a positive way. Sure. And, uh, you know, and, and really important to me is I have two daughters and, and I want to leave a legacy, not just financial. I want them to say that my father impacted the world in a positive way. And so, uh, you know, I want to be the best role model. And I do want to provide opportunities for both of my daughters. My, my oldest daughter is now in now not enrolled quite yet. However, she's on her way to the number one, uh, veterinary school in the country that's great. and uh, and uh and that's fantastic and uh and my youngest daughter is certainly headed the same way so the the legacy i leave behind uh is my vision and and uh, affecting people along the way a great retirement and travel isn't bad either there you go all right <laughs> love it love it love it all right. Next question. What's the best real estate tool or system you use? And now in your coaching business that you recommend when you're, when you're coaching with agents, what, what, you know, whatever comes to mind here on what, what is, what is it is the best tool or system? It's funny. Everything evolves, right? Uh, I, it, a, a year or two, three, four, five years ago, I, I would have said, and I still say database and Jan, you would say database. Of yeah. Course. Of, course, yeah. Like, database. Database, of course, as we know the right way to say it, and, and, uh, and database, I mean, that is the core of your business, Jen, you and I talk about that. We have since we met many years ago that without a database, you really don't have a business. However, I got to say, as of late, becoming more and more powerful in this super hyper competitive market is, is market knowledge. And so, Jan, ah, we I love it. it. knowing your market, and that means knowing I your agree. number knowing your inventory levels, knowing how many price reductions there are a week, knowing uh, how many new listings are coming on the market, average days on market, uh, list price versus sales price, all of those things, those tools, when we're an expert on the market, it allows us to 
better consult our clients. And when we consult our clients properly, they're able to make smarter decisions and faster before the market shifts. They're, they're always on the leading edge, not the following edge. And so our market knowledge and being experts in our market, and we think we're experts. A lot of us think we're experts because yeah. we heard it on the news and we heard it from some guy in the coffee room at the office and we heard it on a meet and we read a, a report from title. However, we're not experts unless we really have a system of studying the market each week. We look at it daily and we have conversations with everyone. God. I am so excited that you, you know, and I just have to shout out to you. You got me re-inspired with your weekly report several years ago when you started sharing that with me. And I really understood what you just said as a broker as all that. I really didn't really know the numbers. I thought yeah. I did because I just looked at the thing once a month. I have become such a student of the market. And when I moved to this new marketplace, I understood. This is when I really went, thank God, David, got me fired up about this. Matt knows. I became Absolutely. a major student of the market here. So the only way I learned this Florida market was looking at the numbers, doing all the things that you coach people to do. And you did it. You really inspired me. And it's a big piece to what I coach people now is you, to be the local market expert means you have to know the numbers. You have to know the market. You have to know it to that detail. I mean, right. it's super exciting. And it's and people don't think that's exciting to know, but it's empowering. You it feel is. confident to be able to have conversations with Absolutely. people. Don't you agree? And yes, I do, Jen. And, you know, as we, as you and I always say through coaching and training, you know, Jen and I, if, if you don't know us and haven't been around us, Jen and I are uh, have a, a long history of, of coaching and training together, right? Doing many, mm -hmm. many trainings on all levels. And, you know, we kind of coined the phrase, when someone asks you what you do for a living, what do you say, Jan? I own a real estate business. <laughs> right, it's a little mindset shift there. I own a real estate business. Oh, and, and I would ask you, Jan, what's the first question everyone, everyone asks when you say you own a real estate business? Yeah, how's, how's the market? Yeah, what's going on in this <laughs> what's crazy- What's happening in the market? You know, and we're you a commodity can answer it. now. Finally, in, uh, as, as real estate business owners, we are a commodity. People want to know what we have, right? And mm -hmm. so we can't give them some lame answer. We have to know. And it's just a single line of data that we need to know, isn't it? Yeah. And we are experts and we can better consult our listings, our enlisting consultations, buyer consultations, and lead generation, and open houses, and general conversations. We can brand ourselves as the expert and we can show value and connect with our people. And you, I, two, you two are, are, are a couple of the, you know, wisest and probably most knowledgeable coaches that I've ever met. You know more about the industry. You know more. But you're good at what you do. But let me just tell you something. I'm not sucking up to you right now. I'll tell you. But what's funny to me watching you guys talk about this, and I think about this every time you start talking about stats, you both absolutely go on fire when you talk about it. We do. We it's come alive. We do. And it, 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 it is the, it, it's, there's excitement. It's the confidence behind that is what is really sets that, that you're not just giving lip service to stats and to knowing the market or being the local expert. You absolutely believe it because well, you speak differently when you talk about it. It's and hard. to that point, it carries over into everything, whether yeah. it's your buyer consultation seller. I just did a market piece. The last time I sent a market piece out like this, I got just a postcard, absentee owners, David, mm -hmm. got two listings that are already closed and I have one coming in April. I'm about to do it again. And it's the story was simply, did you know that the your property has gone up in value 85,000 from January of last year to this year? Simply the numbers on a postcard, Yep. you know, the percentage increase mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, on average in this neighborhood. Uh, it's, it's powerful. That's what people want to know. They do. And, they don't and, want to go look at me. I'm awesome. It's like, did you know that? By the way, and, I can help you if you're correct. interested. Absolutely. And, and we build scripts and dialogues around it. Now, I have specific scripts and dialogues I use that are very effective for, for every application. It, it could be in an open house, how we use the numbers. I mean, very specific systems, scripts, and dialogues. And it is so effective. <laughs> Yep. Okay, see, we have to we have to go to the next question because David oh, and I will just get into we're Matt, we're turning into let's coach everybody again now because we get excited about it. Not saying taper it down, taper it down, guys. It down. All right, well, here's the next question, coach. Wrap it up. Here's the next question, coach. He does, yeah. What is the best advice you would give yourself starting out as a new agent, knowing what you know now? What would you? do differently it was starting over in the real estate business if anything first of all the the, the immediate thing is don't do it man <laughs> <laughs> so what's the best best advice i'd give myself starting out as a new agent uh, you're gonna hate me for saying this or love me maybe uh 
hire a coach. I mean, I, sure. it's not just because I'm a coach. Yeah. Before I was a coach, I should have had a coach, right? And and honestly, in 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 many many ways, Jen has been my coach. Uh, you know, actually, we're we. It's funny. It's it, we've. Evolved. What do you mean? I, I, you know it. I call you, and I need you to coach me out of stuff. So, and, and help There's me. a mutual admiration society here. It's absolutely, a mutual coaching it's relationship, relationship. Yes. just like with and, you. And so, so it, hire a coach would be great. Stay learning based would be another great uh, tip. You know, stay learning based meaning, don't be careful. That's a double edged sword, isn't it, Jen? Stay learning based doesn't mean be a professional student either. Yeah, right on. Get yeah, out and do it. Busy. Oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Oh, I got 17 classes this week. I'm so busy. How's your real estate business? Well, good, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so no. So don't be a professional student. However, stay learning based. That means plug to, plug into classes, read, listen to podcasts like this amazing podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, plug in, stay learning based on a regular basis. You know, get, study the numbers every day. No in the age. Be present, know your numbers, those sort of things. Have a coach, stay learning based and, and, and create systems, create core base. There's only a handful of systems that yeah. you need to be successful in this business. It's not rocket science. And mm -hmm. at, based on experience as a coach and an agent and a broker, Jen, you and I, and Matt, you as well from, the, you know, from your many levels of, of experience and success, most people don't have the core basic five or six systems in place. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. That's why there's coaching businesses. So I yeah. love it. All right. Brilliant. Awesome answers. I'm all motivated again. I can't, we could talk forever on that, but really yeah. Matt has some other questions that he's uh -oh. going to by. Yeah. Ahead. Well, first of all, I, you know, it sounds like, you know, you, you have been looking for that work-life balance for your entire career. Right. And I think it sounds right. like you have finally gotten to a place where you fairly, really have kind of, maybe you're, it's always going to be something more to shoot for, but you found the balance in your, in your work and life, which is fantastic. You clearly are the local market expert, but I think we still need to a little bit, know a little bit, dig a little deeper and really get to know the real David Squire. So here are some rapid fire questions we're going to give to you and we'll just see. Okay really what's going on up there okay. all right first of all buyers or sellers sellers okay all right easy follow up to that dogs or cats well my dog is sitting right here dogs my cat <laughs> in the other room dogs <laughs> that's true he does have one i could go on on that one but i won't okay. you're on camera yeah all right david squire beach house or cabin in the woods oh matt you know what? Don't let me down, David. Oh, cabin in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only person that said that. Everyone <laughs> always me. goes both, really, and then says oh, beach house. <laughs> that's really tough. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, work from the office or work from home? Oh, crap. Okay. Responsibly from the office. Logically, <laughs> All right. home. All right. Okay. Good. I like that. That was good. Real estate office. Coaching homish. Good. I like it. I like it. All right. Early bird or night owl? Really early bird. And as a matter of fact, if you're on my numbers list, you get them at about 4 30 a.m. on every every Wednesday morning. Yes, Correct? You do. <laughs> yeah. I get him. So either that's either a really early bird or a really late I, night owl. <laughs> so it could be. Well, in my <laughs> 20s in Vegas, I, I was know. a late Yep. Yeah. There you go. All we right, David Squire. We do go through cycles with that early bird. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, time machine or magic wand? Definitely time machine. Ah, why? Wow. Because you don't need a You're magic wand. You're the only person that said time, time machine. machine David what was that? Uh, you don't need a magic wand if you have a time machine. Okay. Oh, interesting. Right. And he, he said if you have a magic wand, you could create a time machine. Oh, <laughs> darn it. <laughs> There's always a loophole. So yes, there you go. Okay. okay. I'm going to ask you a, a question, David, that I know the answer to that I have. We haven't asked anybody else, but let me just ask you this question because I think about you every time I pick up a bottle of hot sauce, hot mild sauce. or spicy. Is coming. <laughs> mild, mild or spicy. Spicy. <laughs> spicy. I think we know the answer. I think my mouth still burns from that uh, contest oh. we had all those years ago at Realty oh, It was hilarious. Scary. Okay. Last question. Not of this or that. Uh, really just more about uh, honing into you a little bit more and what you think uh, this is for you. I'd like to ask you this question, Mr. Squire. What is your superpower? Mm -hmm. 
connecting and re connecting with people on, on a, on a real level. Yeah. I, I would say that that's very accurate. I think you, you read yourself very well there. You're, you are very easy to relate to and you always feel very comfortable around David Squire. So that is a, an absolute power that uh, many do not have. And you do, you definitely have that Mr. Squire. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I love it. Well, David, our 200th episode would not have been complete without your <laughs> presence in it and uh, sharing your your wise words and all that great coaching advice. Thank you so much for being here and wish Do you I all the best with everything. And I'll be talking to you next week for some coaching. <laughs> Do I get a coffee mug with a 200 on it or a balloon or anything like that? Um <laughs> Yeah, no? yeah, but yeah, we'll figure something out. It'll just, you know, watch your mail for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll watch it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I the thing I look forward to always after these sessions is the bloopers. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Well, uh, matter of fact, what I'll do, David, I think I'll look back at some previous bloopers and put on our show notes just so Evan really knows David Squire. That was a great idea. Thanks for putting that out for the. I just I just looked at one the other day and still laughed out loud. They're they're the best. So (laughs) again, thank you for having me. Uh, I really love uh, being a part of this, and um, and we'll see on the next one. Awesome. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Cool. All right, our next our next guest is someone I've known for many many years, and Matt, you've known her as well. Uh, Catherine Bavard is joining us. We uh, have both been brokers and uh, just friends for gosh, Catherine, how long have I known you? I don't even know anymore. I lose track of that. But it's a long time in, in Las Vegas. I've met you in, in the Las Vegas area and we've worked in different companies together. But why don't you tell the, our listeners, you've been, I think we've had you on our podcast before, but just remind everybody, what's your story? How, how'd you get to start it? I know you've done a little bit of everything and to where you are today in real estate. And welcome to the 200th episode. Oh, thank you, Jan and Matt. I'm I'm really honored uh, when you guys asked me to be here today. Uh, um, congratulations uh, on your 200th broadcast. That's uh, that's amazing, and and uh, you're putting so much good information out there for for the agents. This is such a a worthwhile project. Um, so hey, I, you know I I've been in the industry for ever. Um, you know, let me see. I'm, I, I'm, I'm admitting to over 25 yeah. years. Okay, I, I was going to say longer than 20 years. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've hit quite 30 yet. Maybe, maybe I have, I'd have to, I'd, I'd have to look, but you know, I started off of course, like everybody else does in general real estate sales um, as, as a real estate agent and um, built my business. Even back then, the, you know, the one regret that I have is at one time over 20 years ago, I owned the Las Vegas real estate.com. Uh, um, yeah. And, and wow. didn't think that it was going to go over, you know, that the internet was going to be that big. So I let it go. Uh, <laughs> wow. Womp, womp. Yeah. Mistakes that we, that we make, but uh, yeah, I was a working real estate agent. Um, I, I will say that at one time, um, I was the second top producing agent in the Southwest. Um, and I, and I did that by, um, putting systems in place and, and I was the open house Queen, you know, um, and, and and I think, you know, some things are never die out and doing open houses is coming back strong. So uh, I did did open houses uh, sold. And then um, I was actually in a car accident and uh, couldn't really do the, uh, you know, showing homes and going up and down stairs and everything like that. So I uh, got into management. <laughs> actually, <laughs> My broker at the time asked me if, if I would like to be, uh, you know, the assistant broker and do the training. And I kind of started in doing training and being being the broker and um, loved it. You know, I, I, training and teaching has always been kind of my passion. And I've done a lot of that in different areas of my life. And then I, I had the um, sort of game changing experience of being able Jan, to work with Jan um, with one of the big companies and learning even more about putting systems in place and training. And uh, so I, I managed a, a company, a nationwide company, and, and, and again, took that office to the number one top producing office in the country, yep. uh, then was made an offer by another brokerage 
and uh, opened up an office there and took that office to number one. So at that time, um, you know, I, I think that I, I also opened up my own office uh, about four years ago and found out all of the um, ins and outs and good and bad of, of running your own brokerage with all of the, I was more of an administrator that I was able to do anything else of teaching and training. I was a non-competing broker. So uh, then I joined uh, forces with my company now, Fidacity, which I think has this uh, sort of unique business philosophy and business model where for sure. agents are owners and uh, it's working out well. So that's where I am today. Talk about coming full circle. I am now, Catherine is now my broker. In yeah. so that's right. We've come that's a right. long way, Catherine. Uh, brokers together. And now it's like, there's my broker. So thanks broker for joining us today. So I ha we have three questions we're asking our guests today. And the first question is what defines your real estate career and why? And it's like the legacy question. What do you want to be known for in this real estate business when it's all over and done with? You know, I, I think that making a, a difference, making a, a positive difference, being able to touch lives, and, and helping agents on a path of creating success. You know, I, I had agents that um, I trained, you know, 15, 20 years ago, who still, when I see them, they come up to me and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, it's such a good feeling to know that I was part of that process of their success. And I really, um, I, I find that very fulfilling. I think, you know, uh, I serve um, on, uh, a lot of committees, uh, you know, the Nevada Real Estate Division Advisory Council and professional standards. And um, I'm a senior faculty member. And so those ways of giving back to the community and my, and my industry, I think raising the bar, I want to be known as someone who, you know, uh, was gave back to her to her community. That's awesome. We have a bit of a theme going on here when yeah. you get to watch all of these in, in, in hindsight. It's very interesting. Okay. Love that answer. The next question is what's the best real estate tool or system you use or you recommend that your agents use? Yeah, by far, it's got to be a CRM. You know, I mean that, that I can't tell you how many times agents come to me literally like crying because they didn't stay in touch with their agent base. You know, they've been in the business for five or six years. They could be doing 80% of their business by referrals now if they had. And, um, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's like a stethoscope for a doctor. You've got to have a CRM. I like that analogy. Answer. Yeah. All right. I love it. And learn to use it. Okay. There and therein lies the challenge, which we could have a whole nother episode on. All right. And the uh, next question then is what's the best advice you would either give your, go either way with this, give yourself if you were starting over, if there was anything you could go back and change and, or whichever way you want to go, what's the best advice you give new agents? Cause I know you bring new agents on and you're always influencing them. So whichever way you want to go with that or both. Okay. okay. In fact, I just finished doing, an interview five minutes ago with a with a new agent. Okay. So uh, the advice that that I gave her, and and I think it's true. You know, it's like doctors and attorneys pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to Harvard and Yale and Stanford because they know there they're going to get the best training, and they're going to build the best foundation for their career that they possibly can. Mm -hmm. And real estate is no different. You know, we're professionals. So building that foundation of training, uh, I think is, is really key. So I would say to new agents, make sure that you get the best training possible and, and that you avail yourself of all of the training that's also available through your association, yeah. right? I mean, the, it's, it's crazy, uh, you know, all the free, the see you know matrix classes all of the free classes that our association offers that i talk to agents who've been in the business for years i'm like oh i didn't know that really so yeah if not yeah, you know what I, i've been waiting for somebody to answer that 
with with the yeah. whole do the train you know make sure you know what the heck you're doing be someplace where you're going to get the training and you're going to use the training it's you just don't learn this by osmosis that's brilliant okay awesome um all right so those were really straightforward excellent answers to all those questions now matt what do we really want to know from Catherine? Yeah, well, first of all, I just want to say the one what I love about Catherine Brevard is that you always know where you stand with Catherine Brevard, and you always know that whatever anything that anything you ask her, anything that you are are needing or trying to learn from her is going to be good. It's going to be good. She knows wow. her business. She knows her stuff. She's been doing it for a long time, but it's not even that. She's not like stuck in a, a path. It's she'll always find what's right. I think is 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 really the, the that always comes out. You feel good. You feel good about it. So I, I, it's been a pleasure working with you over the years, Catherine. And um, I I don't know. It's just it, you know it, you have a rare quality that a lot of people don't have in real estate. And you really do care about the industry itself, which I think is you know not what a lot of people do. And I applaud you for that. So that's a great thing. So we learned a little bit about what you've done and where you've been and all that kind of stuff. And some of your, you know, quick, quick, you know, philosophy on things, but I think we really need to find the real Catherine Bavard. And to do that, we're going to throw you some uh, rapid fire questions. And we're going to start off with one that I think, you know, it's obvious first question you would ask any real estate agent that's been in business for a while. And that would be buyers or sellers. Well, you know, I'm a non-competing broker now, so um, I do for close friends and family, but I feel it's important to be there for my agents. But I always, you know, tell my agents that, uh, you know, it has to be a personal choice for them. But working with sellers, you know, you get to a certain point where you can only work with so many clients at a time. So building your business by working with sellers, you know, to list is to last. There you um, go. Right. <laughs> Right. Is is what I would be recommending. Cool. Now, I will tell you that for me personally, I love working with first time home buyers <laughs> so because funny. they're so, you know, they're just they're so grateful. They love they love you. And you're part of that buying their first home, which is a lifetime memory. And it's so rewarding. And and yep. and you kind of, you know, it's like. You take them by the hand and you get to, you know, help them buy their first home. And I like that. That's fine. It's funny. Almost everyone we've talked to has kind of had that same response. It's like exactly. that. It's, it's like, I, let's, let's the last, but the emotion behind the buyers and the whole doing something that's helping someone else is always going to come out. These questions are like that. You know, it's really hard to pick one or the other. So, you know, the follow up obvious uh, real estate question to that would be um, dogs or cats? Dogs. I mean, I have the I have the best and Jan, who's Jan knows dog in the world by far. I've always had cats. Daisy is awesome. But Daisy, my 12 pound black shootle is incredible. Oh, there you go. Yep. All right. I can't believe she's not with beach you house, at the office. Beach house, or con, or, uh, beach house or cabin in the woods? Yeah, beach house. I was going to say condo in the woods. Not a lot of condos in the woods. <laughs> I knew that was going to be that one. All right. All right. Work from the office or work from home? Oh, that, you know, for <laughs> me, gosh, that's that's really uh, interesting because when I have to do things that I don't like, you know, like when we're talking admin work, <laughs> um, I, I get I do more at the at the office because there's no distractions and I can't escape. Um, yeah. But if I, you know, I probably do my best creative work and my best writing and, um, you know, collaborations from home. Yeah. When you're in your own space, right? All right. Yeah. All right. Early bird or night owl? I've been looking forward to your answer. On you this. know, I was signing commission orders at 6.05 a.m. this morning. <laughs> Wow. So, so yeah, I'm an early, I'm, I used to be a night owl, you know, I don't, I don't know. I think COVID for some reason kind of changed that uh, for, for me. So uh, yeah, I'm now, I'm now an early bird. So just because you're an early bird, let's not, I, I want anyone to get the idea that Catherine does not know how to uh, have a good time and which sometimes will take you into the evening. <laughs> <laughs> a few times, a few times. We do have some world-class casinos here with, you know, various entertainments and distractions. So, 
Yeah, I've been known to stay up till the sun comes down or sun comes yeah. up. Catherine's a fun, <laughs> fun person to party with. I'm just telling you right now. All right. <laughs> Where were you <laughs> at? In time, 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 machine, time, you. Yeah. time machine or magic wand? Wow, magic wand. <laughs> okay. That's, that's been pretty universal, hasn't it, Jan, so far? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right, Catherine, uh, everyone's got one of these, and I know you, I'm sure you know what yours is right off the top of your head. So I'm going to ask you, what is your superpower? Ooh, really? Everybody knows what theirs is? Oh, everyone has one. Now, sometimes you have to think a little bit, but everyone's got a superpower. What do you think yours is? Um, so I... Um, Stumping her. You know, I, yeah, I was going to say being able to think on my feet, but obviously <laughs> not. <laughs> um, I, you know, maybe being resilient. Oh, yeah. That's actually really good. That's good. That's a good yeah. one. And in this business, actually, in any business and in, in life, you have to do that. But, in life. But in this, 100%. Business, in this business, especially, right? See, yeah. that comes right out of the gut there, Catherine Bavard. Resiliency. Yes, indeed. Okay. I like love it. More. There's All some right. stories there, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, for another time. <laughs> for another day. Yeah. Thank Everybody you for coming on here. Stories about real estate, I think, yeah. you know. Oh yeah. It does require that. I mean, it's 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 very powerful superpower to have. Catherine, thanks for coming and joining us and sharing all your wisdom and insights to uh, our audience. And and we're we're uh, just so pleased that you could be here today. And and thank you for being my broker. I've as I've always told people, um, Catherine is I feel hands down one of the best brokers I've ever met business wise. You've got great business sense. You've taught me so much over the years when it comes to that in in this real estate world. And here we are full circle. And I just I find it I just find it amusing. I was thinking this morning. Catherine's my broker. That's just wild. And I'm happy That's about awesome. it. So thank you. It is. Uh, you know, it, it, again, uh, both of you have been so influential in in, in my real estate um, career as well. I probably wouldn't be here today. So, um, you know, I, I there's uh, there's not anything in the world that, that I wouldn't do for either one of you. So thank you again for your help and support. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks thank again, you. Catherine. Bye. We are going to talk to Cosmo Morabi right now. And Cosmo and I have known each other. Gosh, Cosmo, we've how long have we known each other? Would you say it's four years? About four years? At least, yeah, I wouldn't say kind of four, four yep. ongoing to five. Somewhere. All right, so I'm going to let Cosmo tell you a little bit more about him if you haven't seen him on some of our previous podcasts, but Cosmo and I uh, and Matt, we are partners in our WBNL coaching company. I met Cosmo through his wife, interviewing his wife, who was in the who's no longer in the real estate business because Cosmo has become the real estate marketing genius that he is and and real estate guy. So I know that you, let me turn it over to you, Cosmo. And, and Cosmo uh, kind of co-manages the team that we have in Las Vegas. So I'm handling things from afar as sort of the, the resident broker, <laughs> help out an agent when I need to in your boots on the ground over there. But what got you even coming into real estate? Or just tell everybody a little bit about your backstory, 30 seconds, and how it led you to where you are now in, in uh, overseeing a whole bunch of things in real estate. Yeah, could Try to keep it short, but and you know the story is, uh, I grew up playing basketball my entire life. I went to college on a scholarship to play basketball, and after I was done with college, um, I had an opportunity to go overseas to play pro, but I decided not to. And from there, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So <laughs> I had Welcome to kind to of world. relearn a, a different passion. I, I didn't want to stay with sports. And so I dove into getting a degree in occupational therapy, which led me to do a lot of uh, work with older adults uh, in nursing facilities or in their home. And uh, that opened me up to the idea of uh, doing a project my senior or my, not my senior year, my last uh, year of my doctor degree. And I learned about home modifications. And through home modifications, I keep, became obsessed with the idea of having a home that is modified for older adults so that they can live successfully um, throughout the remaining years. And so 
that kind of got the real estate juices going for me. Um, my mom was a real estate agent in Los Angeles at the time. And, mm. uh, you know, just kind of hanging around her and seeing what she does really got me interested. When I moved out here to Vegas, uh, my wife got into real estate. Uh, funniest story is that the day that she was looking for uh, Jan or looking for somebody that she could look for as a mentor, Jan, um, we actually were looking you up and you reached out to her, I think. I think that was the story, right? Totally. Whereas it's a weird it happened story. To yeah, to a point where you guys didn't know each other, but for some reason it just happened. On the it was the veteran day. connection, wasn't it? I wasn't found it? her on LinkedIn. I was That's right. purposely searching on LinkedIn for agents that could partner and join my team that were veterans. That's and right. I found her. And you know what? Let me tell you, and this will segue perfectly into some things I know you're going to talk to us about. Because at that time, I know you were doing more of the marketing and the behind the scenes. And so here she was. I could tell she was a newer real estate agent working for like, a, I think, Cole Banker, maybe a local Cole Wardley now. And she had an introductory video on her website. And I was like, oh, my God, I have to talk to this person because I think you have to have video. Here's one of the few people I have seen saying, here's me. And you did that video. Didn't yeah. You? So we created an intro <laughs> video for her. And. Uh, you know, my my background, I, I didn't know it at the time, but I had been creating like little training videos <laughs> throughout my high school, college. Like I loved doing that for projects. And then I realized, you know, um, once Dallas was in the business that I wanted to do marketing. And so uh, eventually I ended up getting my license while I was still working uh, as an occupational therapist. And then I joined you, Jan. Uh, mm -hmm. and my wife and then uh, from there it's just growing uh through social media through through video and and that's kind of where uh, my story starts so you're in over three years license correct i mean you've been doing some things behind the scenes but your physical yeah. license has been three plus years right or going into yeah, three, years. three and a half a little three bit. and a half years okay good so that's where we're at all right so what let's jump into the question so the first question is 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 simply what defines your real estate career and why? And, and the, it's really like the way I like to look at this question too is what do you want to be known for, you know, like with clients and with, with anybody and what, what's unique about you as a, as a real estate entrepreneur? I think it's providing value through video and uh, you know, I'm not the best at it, but I think that there is I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. There's a ton of, value that can be given um, through video. And this is not just for the person that's a home buyer or home seller, but this is also helping agents create video to provide that value, to provide some storytelling, to provide, um, you know, what it is they do and what they do to help their clients. And I think that kind of defines what I'm doing and, and what I want to continue to do. And, and, and really is, um, you know, marketing, and providing value through video. So, all right, um, and that that definitely is already defining you. You know the work that you've no done. No kidding. That has and, and and here's the thing: it's not an overnight success story, correct? Working with video, it's not for everyone. You you're willing to take the learning and uh, Matt and I were talking about you know a, a little bit this about you and you just have this insatiable appetite for learning and, and discovering what's next and how can I fix this and adapt it and, and always growing from it. Right. I mean, it's been an evolution, just your journey from doing Instagram videos and reels and whatnot to where we are now with YouTube has been amazing. And six months, eight months later, the channel's really starting to get traction. Correct. You know, and, and, uh, and it would be like anything when we coach, we talk about no matter what you're doing, nothing happens overnight. If you're going to farm, if you're going to mail, if you're going to call expired, if you're going to do YouTube videos, it takes a bit, right? I mean, what would be your advice if somebody's really thinking about it, uh, doing more video? What, what would you have them do? What would you have them do first? Well, firstly, it, it's got to be a passion, right? You you need to have a reason why you want to share things through things through video. And you don't have to be good at video. You don't necessarily have to know much about it. But if you're passionate, maybe about sharing value or teaching, if you like teaching seminars, for instance, right, you'd be somebody that I would highly recommend be somebody that gets into video because you already enjoy 
sharing information, sharing value to a group of people. Mm -hmm. uh, or even if you love doing one on one consults, like if you're an agent that loves just like sitting down with two people and, you know, explaining them, answering all their questions, you'd be perfect to be an agent to, to, to make video. And so or how about if you're um, just like showing homes, which is what people tell me, hello, people like to look at homes. You could do yeah, video exactly. You, you could home. do the one minute home tours that I always recommend go. agents should be doing. Um, but right. yeah, there, there's so many, for most agents, there's an avenue to getting into video that you could be passionate about. So and it's, think, but stick with, instead of thinking it has to be, what I'm hearing you say is, you don't have to go be that person you saw on YouTube that has, you know, 10,000 followers. You can just be like, what am I good at? And how can I do something with video on that? Which really yeah. probably is going to be your answer to this next question. And the, and the question is, uh, I, I, let's see if we can stump the panel. What is the best real estate tool or system that you use that you think is, you know, that, that you're, that you're going to recommend it. Am I going to think it's video? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, to be specific, it's the camera on the back of your phone. Like, that's, okay. That's as simple as that. It's this. This is the best that's tool. Awesome. This yeah. is the best tool that you, you say that we all have. Yeah. The camera okay. on the back of your phone. It, it allows you to share information to anybody, anywhere, at any time. And, um, you know, that that right there can can bring you leads. It can help build trust. It can do anything you can possibly imagine because uh, we know that when, you know, somebody sees someone's face and they're talking to them, there's more of a connection there than a voicemail, than a text message, than an email, right? So this camera on the back of your phone is worth millions of dollars if you want it to be and you're willing to do the work to make it, you know, worth that. So so would you say beyond just this becomes your new best friend and tool and you said passion, be passionate, you know, be good at, you know, just take the thing that you're good at in the business and figure a way to leverage that using video. And when you say video, you're meaning like, regardless, like choose your platform too. I know we all believe that. Don't try to be on every single platform. Can you speak yeah. to that a little bit? Because yeah, there's a have, lot of technicalities. Uh, uh, video, they all want you to use video. Let's say that. Right. Yeah. There, there's so many different technicalities we can dive into. Um, but they're not as important as getting started. So firstly, I just want to say that. But when you're talking about platforms, yeah, content is consumed differently on every platform. And it's becoming more apparent with, with TikTok, which I love mm. talking about now. And I'm I'm ready to jump into that, too. Are you? Um, of course yeah, he is. It, I've, I'm seeing agents do very unique things that I think will carve a space for them for the next decade, right? Mm. So... Um, for instance, there's a gentleman uh, right now on TikTok, five days a week, he teaches a class every morning from nine to noon, like nine to I 11. I saw you talking wow. about that, Cosmo. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so intrigued by what he's doing because he's literally sitting there and just educating people and people are giving them the, his contact and they're DMing his wow. their contact info and they're like, I want to learn. I want to know how to buy. Like buyer, how to buy a house, how to sell a house or just getting qualified. Yeah, for, so he does that. like a first time home buyer class. Mm -hmm. He does an education on Vegas as a whole. He wow. does um, Airbnb, like investment property class. Um, and so like, I, I don't know what the other two are, but he, you know, separates it yeah. into five days and he does it every single week. So he's and not sitting there going like, pick me, pick me. He's going, I'm just going to teach you about real estate. Yeah. And when I first saw him doing this, he had like 50 people in there. But if you're consistent on the platform, you know, now he has like 250 people watching. People from out of state are watching him. And then he's Is he doing it live? agents otherwise. Yeah. So he's doing TikTok lives. Ah, interesting. And it, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Um, and he mm -hmm. is passionate about food. Like you can tell like he just <laughs> loves talking about food all the time. Uh, and Vegas food. So his TikToks are him going to restaurants around Vegas and just talking about the food there. And that's literally his passion. So his passion is, I like food. I like teaching real estate. So I'm going to post about Vegas food. I'm going to teach live. Honestly, it's that simple. He's yeah. he's going to the places and he likes talking about it anyway. Yeah. So now he's just being okay about putting that up online. Yeah, because the best way to make a connection with someone is just to know someone's genuine self. And that's just what he's doing. I love right? this uh, advice. It's I love this advice, Cosmo. So it's like, what's your passion about? And how can you leverage where people's eyeballs can find you? You know, yeah. because and, you're and we, being authentic. I mean, you could get into specifics that, you know, you might be fit for one 
platform mm -hmm. versus another, right? Um, I tend to like YouTube more than the short form mm -hmm. stuff now. Um, I think I fit there better, but but you're going over to TikTok. I might fit for the short form content a lot better. So just <laughs> depends right. on, on your personality um, and what you want to do. So. All right. And just shout out, you know, since we are, we do have a, a coaching platform, Cosmo did put together a brilliant how to do YouTube course and uh, below our show notes in our show notes, if you're listening or you're over on YouTube, you can just get links to that. And there's a whole YouTube for real estate, tell you everything. I learned a ton watching yeah, his, great uh, course. going through his training. So he will teach you how to do it if you want to jump into the big daddy, which is YouTube, but you don't have to. You could be on TikTok. You could be doing Facebook lives or just Facebook um, uh, stories or Instagram reels or whatever the heck is next, right? Yeah. And anybody out there that wants to dive into YouTube, I'm more than happy to get on a call with you and help mm -hmm. you do your first video. And I, we are generating proof as yeah. we heard right now, like in this exact moment that you can generate up to six figures and gross commissions in one year from one YouTube video. We have an agent that's literally made one really amazing YouTube video and is, you know, on track to clear six figures and gross commissions. It's, and it's nuts. Crazy. How yeah. And, awesome. and if you're somebody that has been thinking about it and you just need a little, you know, push to get there, a little advice, mm -hmm. I am more than open to taking cool. any call with anyone looking to do that. All so, right. Cosmos information is all going to be there for you as well. Let's ask yeah. this last question. Yeah. Uh, which is what's the best advice you would give yourself, even though you're relatively new, but if you knew what you knew now, four years later, almost, what would you have done differently? And this is advice really for maybe somebody getting into the business, but four years of, of uh, experience, what would you have done differently or anything? Well, I mean, there's, there's a ton of things you can, you know, say that I wish I would have known that or improved on that beforehand, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, technical knowledge, contracts and that. But I want to stay on, on the same theme here as with video and Number one thing is to organize your video files in a matter so you can come back to them and reuse it, right? So, <laughs> that's brilliant. Oh my so gosh. Made so many, I've made so many oh. videos. Um, for instance, I might go to like uh, Green Valley Ranch or like a strip mall or something like that. And I made that two years ago with quality video, but I don't know where I placed like, that where file. Where is it? <laughs> and I want to redo a video on that area and I don't have it. So, um, you know, I so think the advice is a Dropbox. The advice is label it it's yeah. and put it somewhere in the moment, not two years later. Where the well, heck is that? You don't have to do it on. in the moment, but I think at least pretty folder. soon, if you can put things in an organized manner in folders, you're going to be able to. So can I? La I'm going to share something life. with you. That's Everything brilliant. Everything I do is here and I have a thousand video, you know, like too many videos I'm trying to clear off of here. So I have it connected to iCloud. So what I did over the weekend to your point, which I now wish I had listened to your advice that you had told me this and I had, I, even though I knew this and I had listened to it, I literally spent, I don't know how many hours downloading the stuff from iCloud, which doesn't have anything other than the crazy numbers or, or DJI, whatever. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And looking at it and just bulking it up because thank God iCloud has it organized in such a way that it was taken in this city at this time, yeah. downloaded them, put them to a folder and then put them up into the drive. And at the time I could see them, I was redoing it. So that is amazing advice because um, you all the time you're shooting images or photos uh, or videos that you could start building a B-roll library that you could go back to, but it's a pain in the butt when you have to go through 300 videos to find the shot of Green Valley Ranch that you're trying to get. There um, is no person watching or listening to this that could not learn from that tip. Oh right my there. God. All right. So there you go. Be organized and be ready to go. And don't be afraid to jump into, uh, you weren't though. See, that's the beautiful part. You were never afraid to go jump in and do that. Um, a lot of well, people Well, initially, are. Jan, you know, my thought was, you know, my wife, would be in front of the camera and I'd be the person That's behind right. the scenes. Be a producer and but, a director. But I figured I, you know, after I tried it a few times, I enjoyed it too. So, there um, you, you know, there, there's always going to be that sense of, of uh, hesitancy or fear in front of getting in mm -hmm. front of the camera for the first few times, uh, just like we did with that agent we mentioned earlier. But, um, you know, you might just need somebody to, to kind of push you and get over those fears or you, you get to a point where you're ready to do it. And, and from there... You can be making so, videos all day. So yeah. to sum it up, 
video, Just Do It by Cosmo Marabi. <laughs> Over to you, Matt, with some yeah, fun okay. questions. So, so we know that Cosmo is uh, got a great marketing mind. He's got had a very interesting uh, path into actually really into real estate, even though we had a family connection there, but interesting path into the real estate business. But I really think Jan and I have gone through about seven questions that I think we could ask anybody in real estate to really find out what or who, I guess, really is the real Cosmo Morabi though. Okay. <laughs> Question okay. number one, buyers or sellers? This is going to be weird. Uh, buyers, to be honest. <laughs> That doesn't surprise me. I really? figured you were okay. going to say that. I figured you'd be the only one out of our eight that would say no, buyers. But well, why? People like buyers. Yeah, why? Why buy? Why buyers, Cosmo? I like uh, well-informed, pre-approved buyers. Let's put it and and ones that trust you, right? So that that's the difference, right? Um, you know, through the videos, I'm sharing about locations. I'm sharing information that is helping somebody make the decision that they want to live in a specific area or. Uh, you know, in Vegas, move to Vegas as a whole. And, you know, I like that aspect of introducing somebody to information about the area or helping them, you know, make that decision. And uh, when they are pre-approved, when they are high quality buyers, when they have a lot of trust in you because of they've, they've seen these videos, um, I think that's why I choose buyers over sellers. When it comes to selling, um, I have nothing against it, but if I had to choose one, it would be buyers. I love That's it. That's, awesome. it. That's yeah. awesome. Dogs Good. or cats? Dogs or cats? Oh, this is tough. Um, can I say both? <laughs> no, you have to pick one. This or that, Cosmo. <laughs> this is tough. Um, dogs, dogs. All right. All right. Yeah. Beach house or cabin in the woods? You guys didn't making it tough for me. Um, I like again. I, I'm a person that enjoys both aspects of this, but it would be ca cabin in the woods. There you as go. much as All I right. hate bugs, I, I like the ability to. That works. Work from off of the office or work from home. <laughs> this is silly. Uh, work from home. Uh, now, would you have said that before COVID? Yeah, before COVID, I like working from home All right. too. All right. um, I knew that's one I did know. Yeah, early bird or night owl? I know this one too. I, I, I am a night owl. Yes. Um, I, I do get the creative juices at night. And so uh, my wife is the opposite. She sticks to a structure, structured time frame. And, and me, on the other hand, I like getting those juices flowing at night. And I think uh, we supplement each other that way. And it's really good. It's a good so, point. Yeah. And getting about three hours of sleep. Right. Well, you have it covered with the kids. That's right. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Time machine or magic wand? Ooh, this is this is good. Uh, magic wand. Uh, oh, I don't wow. like the idea of going back in time or doing anything like that. Um, All right. Very I'm insightful. On, I'm on the same page. This is insightful. All right. The last question is not really a this or that, but we'd like you to, because everyone's got one and everyone really knows what their what this is, if you think about it. What is your superpower? I think it's visualizing certain things before they can happen and putting it together. Yes. Uh, that's awesome. I think I do that in my head a lot. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I like to sometimes um, when I'm making videos, as an example, I'm piecing together how shots already look like. I'm piecing together what information is going out there before we even get out there. And, uh, you know, sometimes we don't, I don't even script the things with, with John and Katie, for instance, uh, some of the, um, some agents on our team, uh, awesome agents. We, we don't necessarily script anymore. And I already visually have the shots that I want in my head. So I think that's the super bar I have is just kind of seeing things. And I think that absolutely plays tr uh, through, right? Whenever yeah. you watch any of the videos you oh do and God. actually as, watching your progress as you've been, uh, you know, learning and growing with videos, I would say that's definitely the case. That's awesome. Cosmo, thank you for answering this question. I, I'm visualizing right now that besides this real estate stuff that, that you, you're making happen, I can see you totally moving into real estate. I mean, in the video world of being a documentarian or doing something, I swear to God, you wait and see something's going to happen in the future where it's going to be a revolved around 
taking the, what you're doing with success with these videos and whether it's teaching other people, helping people buy and sell houses. But I can see that in you. You know, it's, it's exciting. It brings out your creative juices, right? Or it might be a whole family uh, thing, too, because I believe there's right. other Marabis that are uh, uh, raised or are growing right into the whole video. Holy uh, mackerel, yes. Yeah, oh, they, they all got their own passions, though. They're, they're on other things. But um, Coe's going to yeah, be an astronaut, it, maybe. Being part of part of video or being able to, to get in front of a video camera is definitely something that they all know how to do. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. So, Cosmo, thank you so much for sharing your insights and your uh, some really great tips here with this theme that you're you know you're you're doing it. You're living your passion. You're found the way to be passionate about real estate. I think if some if somebody asked you years ago, if you would see yourself doing real estate, you'd be like, no way, you know, and maybe you still kind of feel that way, but you found a way to bring what you do and the, your superpower as it is to have fun with this and then, you know, continue to empower people. So that's pretty cool. So thanks for sharing your time with us today. Absolutely. Thanks, this was fun. And I will say that it helps when you have somebody who can answer all the questions for you. So <laughs> I want to thank you, Jan, uh, you know, uh, right from the get-go, being connected with my wife, it, it it allowed me to to not feel nervous about doing certain things because uh, you're always one text or call away from giving me the answer that I needed in order to make a real estate deal happen. So um, but no, I look feel... how such a fast learner you are now. I thank you for that. But that's what brings us. What makes a good partnership, yeah. right? And yeah. I um, love that when we have a team member say, "Hey guys, what do you think about this?" Cosmo and I will pretty much know that we're going to have the same opinion or have the same yeah. insights on things. We bring maybe something to the table, but that's what's happened. That's where you've evolved to. So well done. So thanks again. Awesome. All right, talk thanks, to you soon. Yeah, this was Appreciate fun. Your time. This was awesome. All right, bye bye. Well, that is a wrap. Uh, and if you've hung around for the last two and a half hours, you are a dedicated podcast listener. But we had a heck of a lot of fun putting these interviews together. And uh, I know that, you know, I learned a few things about all of these people that I didn't know before. And it was exciting to, to hear about that. If you want to, you know, go check out our show notes, which will have a little more information about our special guests and links to all of the stuff and how you can get actually a hold of them if you want to contact them personally. Go over to our show notes at wbnlpodcast.com, uh, episode 200. Good stuff, Jenna, right? It was a lot of, it was very interesting, you know, obviously getting their insights, but I do like some of those rapid fire answers. The rapid fire was fun, right? Yeah. yeah I love it. So, so much so. I, yeah, I think we should do it ourselves. All right, let's do it. All right, so, I'm gonna, I'll put them up. I'll put them up. You can start and I'll do mine right after. All right, very good. Back. Ready? Sellers. Buyers or sellers? Sellers? Sellers for me too, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Definitely cats. <laughs> yeah, you got cats. <laughs> yeah, I better say that, right? One mm -hmm. of them sitting right here, I would be yeah, in really big trouble. Yeah, do not. <laughs> beach house or cabin in the woods? You know, I'm like, I like both, but I have to go with beach house. I know, cabin in the woods. See, Jan, right. Brian, Jan and Brian and I. Mm -hmm. Good partner. That, we, we, that's why we make good uh, business partners, because mm -hmm. we bring all things to the equation. Sure. Uh, work from the office or work from home? You know, I, I work from home is what I'm going to say, but I do miss working from the office as well. But work from home is first. Yeah, work from home is my answer too. I think all these, I think you could go either way throughout yeah. your lifetime. Like I would have said office, you know, 10 years ago, but right now, no desire for that. No, nope, work from home. <laughs> I enjoy the home, the home. All right. Early bird or night owl? I have been an early bird for years, originally a night owl, and I'm kind of going back to being a night owl. Really? Oh so, yeah, it's really weird. I'm staying up later now, so I'm gonna say night owl. But let me ask you a question. Are you still able to get up in the morning? Mm, not as early as I used to, because okay, I, I have to stay up later. Yeah, so just yeah I have completely converted, completely converted to an early bird. Never was my thing throughout my whole life, mm -hmm. but I am absolutely an early bird now. So now, I won't really work on getting back to being an early bird. I prefer that, so. Okay. Yeah, you have a long day ahead of you when you get up early. I know. All right, time machine or magic wand? You know, uh, as everybody's answering this question, my first answer when we were playing with this was time machine. Um, but honestly, I'm going to magic wand. Magic wand is way cooler because you can, you know, I mean, we didn't put stipulations on, is it like one wish or do you just have that magic wand forever? But I'm going with magic wand. Exactly. I'm, I'm a Magic Wand fan, too, because, you know, when you got a Magic Wand, you can always, you can always give yourself a time machine. Oh, that's a good point. Magic Wand it is. Right? 
<laughs> okay, and then that last question, uh, Jen O'Brien, what is your superpower? Uh, I'd love it to be flying. <laughs> yeah. If we were really doing uh, real superpowers, super strength, super, you know, honestly, for me, it's, it's coaching. It's what I'm passionate about doing, coaching and educating people. I really think that is my superpower. And how yeah. about you? I think you know it's on the same lines. I think what I can do that uh, that differentiates me and has throughout my career is really being able to kind of listen to the person I'm talking to. So often uh, in business, especially when you're in management, you know you tend to not listen. And I've been able to to kind of thread that needle throughout my career, and I'm proud of that. And I've been able to do that, and I think that actually is my superpower. You are a super listener slash coach slash analyst, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So we're the super coach, the super listener, and we're here for you folks every week here on the WBML podcast. Matt Emerson, here's to the next 100. I love that. Let's we'll, we'll, we will do this again. We might do a five hour episode in the yep in the third 300. <laughs> Sorry, Very hey, strong. don't hurt listening because I just said that. <laughs> yep. All right. All right, everyone. Uh, as always, get up, get out, um, live the life you dreamed, and be forever wandering but not lost. Boom. Congratulations. Boom.